Are we live? Are we live? Oof. Hello? Hello? Maybe? Maybe. Hello? Okay, that's going on. Q. Cool. Great. Can you hear me? I hope you can. Hello everyone, my name is Ezra Garza and welcome to The Winter's Tale Modern. So, I have heard of this. I, hi, 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 hello, how was your school camp, summer school? I, I, I still don't know where you went to, but hello, how are you? <laughs> I missed you. I hope it was all well. Eat. Maybe, maybe it was good, maybe it was not so good, I, hello, maybe, <laughs> I hope you can hear me, you're gonna have to tell me if you can't hear me, can you hear me, uh, there are, can, yeah, can you hear me, can you hear me, okay, cool, cool, great, cool. Yeah, it's a college program. It's going okay. I, my math teacher is really supportive of me. Oh, that's cool. Yay! Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that they're. I'm glad that they are helpful. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Is it like for algebra, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Runs. Well, but anywho, we are reading the Winter's Tale. I know I missed you too. Hey, it's in it's in different. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been really been deviating. I need I need to get it back over there, but it's just so many things, so many things. Yes. <laughs> All right, but you you've missed a heck of a lot of charge feeds though, so I I think I think you're okay for what you've missed. You know, so you know, you, good 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 job on that part. Boop -a All right. But anywho, we're reading the Winter's Tale, modern, and these are the list of characters, which I appreciate muchly. Alright, so we have Leontes, Leontes? King of Sicilia. I'll take leave at 4.55 after dinner and tender. It's alright, make sure you go eat, alright? Because eating is good. It is goodly. Okay? Okay. Hermione. Is that like Hermione even in Harry Potter? Wait. Queen to Leontes. <laughs> Mamilius, young Princess Cecilia, Perdita, 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 daughter to Leontes and Hermione. Four lords of Cecilia, Camillo, Camilla, Antig Antigonus, Clemenus, Clemenus, Diane. Yes, she's scared. <laughs> yes. This <Just kidding. laughs> Paulina, wife to Antigonus. Amelia, a lady attending on Hermione. Polexinus, king of Bo Bo Bohemia. Florizel. Florizel? Florizel. Florizel, my dizzle. <laughs> Prince of Bohemia. Archimedes. Archimedes? Archimedes. 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 Archimedes spells it either, isn't it? No. The lord of Bohemia. Shepherd, reputed father of Perdita. Clown, his son. Oh. <laughs> Mopo. Must be very proud. Must be very proud to have a clown as his son. He. Mopsa, Shepherdess, Dorcas, Shepherdess, Dorcas, 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 Otto, Ligiscus, oh, Archimedes, I, I, I want to say Archimedes, but it, it, it says Archimedes, so I, oh, 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 wait, that's, uh, that's a different, that's a different spelling, where, what was I imagining to eat, Archidemus, 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 that, that's your name. Archidemus, Archidemus. Eat. <laughs> Adolicus, Adolicus, a rogue, a mariner, a jailer. Other lords, ladies and gentlemen, officers, servants, shepherds, and shepherdesses. Time as course. Okay. Archimedes, 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 Archimedes. Hi, Brandon, how are you? We're going through a list of characters. <laughs> Usually I'm alone for that part. <laughs> so no one can hear my interruptions and speech. 
We're, we're reading the Winter's Tale. How are you doing, Brandon? I hope you are good, because we are going into Winter's Tale, and I I should I'm gonna get like a really quick summary. Uh, quick summary of a Winter's Tale. Quick summary. Doing well, just job hunting. Ah, okay. Well, that's good. How's it going with your grandfather? Okay, I'll do it. I know. Synopsis. Ploxenes, king of Bohemia, has been on a nine-month visit to the court of his childhood friend Leontes, king of Sicilia, and his wife. Queen Hermione, groundlessly, Leontes becomes convinced that he is great, great, heavily pregnant. Uh, that he is heavily pregnant. Yes, the, he is now the heavily pregnant one. His heavily pregnant wife has been having an affair with Polixenes. Oh no! Tragedy! Hmm, this kill it? Question mark? I mean, they're not really made with much. I mean, they, they, they're they really, like, really easy to kill and everything. Yeah. Just, 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 just you know, squish it. I mean, sure it's gonna be gross because it's almost like dust almost, but I mean, it, 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 it just, it, it's this squish, this squish, this squish. Okay, the winter sale. We have five scene, at five acts and three scenes. If only it was one three scenes. <sighs> Life. <laughs> okay. So act one, scene one. And to Camilla and Archimedes, Archimedes, Arch. Arch Archimedes? Archimedes. No, it's not Archimedes. Wait, no, it's Archidemus. Demus. I, 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 I know. I don't see her in my mouth. Wait, what? She's not. Oh, um. Brandon, no, please. Don't, um, just, uh, hmm. Maybe, I don't know, spit it out? Question mark? I, um, I'm, I'm going. Archidemus? Archidemus? Archidemus. 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 <sighs> Archidemus. And with my grandfather, he hasn't been showing up to get me. Aww. Hey, Cree. Well, I hope the job hunting goes well for you. And, like, you know, if you want to apply for HEB, you have to go online and do the op online application thing for that, so I would highly suggest that. Please. Question mark. Chewing time. Oh, no, don't chew the. Mm hmm. 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 Uh, versus marinating babies. No, it's this. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> okay, okay. Enter Camillo and Archidemus. 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 If you shall chance, Camillo, to visit Bohemia on like occasion where all my services are now on foot, you shall see, as I have said, great difference betwixt our Bohemia and your Cecilia. Don't bite into a mob. <laughs> yeah, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Camilla, Camillo, I think this coming summer of the King of Sicilia means to pay Bohemia the visitation which he justly owes him. I'm doing that as we speak. <laughs> Archidemus, Archidemus, Archidemus. I'm glad you're filling out the application. Archidemus. Wherein our entertainment shall be famous, we will be justified in our loves. For indeed, Camilla, beseech you, Archimedes, Archidemus. This is going to disturb you so much, because it's not Archimedes, it's Archidemus. It's Archidemus. Archidemus. It's not Archimedes, it's Archidemus. I, 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 No, that's not enough for dinner. Okay, get some dinner. I want to check to make sure I know who these people are. Archidemus is a lord of Bohemia, and Camillo, Camillo, Camillo is one of the four lords of Sicilia. Okay. Camilla, beseech you, Archimedes, verily, Archidemus, verily, I speak it in the freedom of my knowledge. We cannot with such magnificence and so rare, I know not what to say. We will give you sleepy drinks, yet your sentience, unintelligent of our insufficiency, may, though they cannot, praise us as little accuse us. Sound about right. <laughs> Uh, Camilla, Camilla, you pay a great deal to dear for our, for what's really given. Archidemus, Archidemus, 
Believe me, I speak as my understanding instructs me and as my mind honestly puts it into utterance. Camilla, Cecilia cannot show himself over kind to Bohemia. They were trained together in their childhoods, and their rooted betwixt them been such an affection which cannot choose but branch now. Since there are more mature dignities and royal necessities made separation of the society, their encounters, though not personal, hath been royally attorneyed with interchange of gifts, letters, loving embassies, that they have seen to be together, though absent, shook hands over the vast and embraced, as it were, from the ends of opposed winds. The heavens continue their loves. Archidemus. Close enough. <laughs> Archidemus. I think there is not in the not in the world either malice or matter to alter it. You have an unspeakable comfort of your young Prince Mamillus. It is a gentleman of the greatest promise that ever came into my note. Camilla, I very well agree with you in the hopes of him. It is a gallant it is a gallant child, one that indeed physics the subject makes the old heart flush old hearts fresh. They that went on crutches ear he he was born desire yet their life to see him a man. Archidemus, would they else be content to die? Camilla, yes, if there were no other excuses why they should desire to live. Archidemus, if the king had no son, they would desire to live on crutches till he had one. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Act 1, Scene 2. Enter Leontes, who is... Again, the name of this character is what? King of Sicilia? Hermione, Queen to Leontes, so they're together. Mamilius, young prince of Sicilia. And Perdita, daughter to Leontes and Hermione. Wait, no, they're not here yet. Uh, wait, but why would they just say son of Leontes and Hermione too? If they what? Uh, I gotta go ready. It's supposed to be a special thing. Okay. See you later. Bye. All the hearts. Have fun. <laughs> Pluxinus. 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 You are... King of Bohemia. And you have Camilla, which is again the uh, person... Lord of Cecilia. 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 Okay. Plexinus. Nine charges of the watery star hath been the separate shepherd's note since we have left our throne without a burden. Time as long again would be filled up, my brother, with our thanks. And yet we should should for perpetuity go hence in debt. There and therefore, like a cipher, yet standing in rich place I multiply with one we thank you many thousands more that go before it. Plexinus. Stay your, your thanks a while and pay them when you part. Plexinus. Sir, that's tomorrow. I am questioned by a fear of what might chance or breed upon your absence that may blow no sneaking winds at home to make us say, This I is put forth too truly. Besides, I have stayed to tire your royalty. Leontes, we are tougher, brother, that then you can put us to it. Plexes, no longer say, Leontes, one seven night longer. Plexes, very sooth, tomorrow. Leontes, we'll part the time between then and in that... I'll no gain saying, and in that I'll no gain saying. I'll no accept opposition. Ah, ah, ah. Hmm. Fancy. <laughs> Flickness. Press me not. Beseech you so. There is no tongue that moves. None, none of the world, so soon as yours could win me. So it should now were the necessity in your request. Although it were needful, I denied it. My affairs do even drag me homeward, which to hinder were in your love to whip me. To stay, my stay, to you a charge and trouble. To say both, farewell, our brother. Leontes, tongue tied our queen. Speak you, Hermione. I had thought, sir, to have held at peace until you had a dra drawn oaths for him not to say. Yes, so you, sir, charged him too coldly. Tell him you are sure all in Bohemia as well. The satisfaction that bygone day proclaimed say this to him. He is beat from his westward. Best ward, Leontes. Well said, Hermione. Hermione. To tell he longs to see his son were strong, but let him say so and then let him go. But let him swear so that he shall not stay. We'll flack him hence with the staffs. Yet are of your lord, 
royal presents. I'll adventure the bar of a week. Would not Bohemia you take my lord? I'll give my, him my commission to let him there a month behind the guest. Prefix for parting. Yet good deeds, Leontes. I love thee not a jaw of clock behind. What lady hath she her, her lord? You'll stay? Polixenes. No, madam, Hermione, but you will? Polixenes. I may not, verily. Hermione. Verily! You put me off with limber bells, but I... Though you would seek to unspear the stars with oats, should yet say, sir, no going, verily. You shall not go, a lady is verily, as as potent as a lord's. Will you go yet? Force me to keep you as a prisoner, not like a guest, so you shall pay for your fees. <laughs> Will you depart and save your thanks? How say you, my prisoner, or my guest? By your dread, verily, one of them you shall be. <laughs> I love this. I love this person. Look, says, your guest, then, madam, to be your prisoner would import offending, which is for me less easy to commit than you to punish. Hermione, not your jailer, then, but your kind hostess, come, I'll question you of my lord's tricks and yours when you were boys. You were pretty young, lordlings, then. You're pretty lordings, then. You're pretty lordings, then? You're pretty lordings, then. Young lords, aww. <laughs> Look, says, we were fair queen, two lads that thought there was no more behind, but such a day tomorrow is today, and to be a boy eternal. Hermione, was not my lo was not my lord the very wag of the two? <laughs> Blixen, we were as twins lambs that did frisk at the sun, and bleat the ones at the other. What we changed was innocence for innocence. We knew not the doctrine of ill-doing, nor dreamed that he did. We had pursued that life, and our weak spirits never been higher reared with strong blood. We should have answered heaven boldly, not guilty. The imposition cleared our heredity, heredity ours. Hermione. By this we gather, you have tripped sense. <laughs> By this we gather, you have tripped sense. Felix needs, Oh, my most sacred lady, temptations have since then been born twos. For in those unfledged days was my wife a girl. Your precious self had then not crossed the eyes of my young fellow play, my young playfellow. Hermione, grace to boot! Of this make no conclusion, lest you say your queen and I are devils. Yet go on, the offenses we have made will you do will answer. If you first sinned with us, and then with us you did continue fault, and that you had not slipped not with any but with us. Leontes, is he one yet? Hermione, he'll stay, my lord. Leontes. At my request, he would not. <laughs> Hermione, my dearest, thou never spokest to better purpose. Hermione, never? Leontes, never? But once. Hermione, what? Have I twice said well? When was this before? I prithee tell me. Crowns with praise and makes as bad as tame things. One good deed dying tongueless. The slaughters a thousand waiting upon that. Our praises are our wages. You you may rise with one soft kiss of a thousand furlongs here. With spur, with heat, an acre. But to the goal of my last good deed was that to entreat his stay. Who was I first? It is an elder sister, or I mistake you, or would, oh, would her name were grace. But once before I spoke the purpose. When? Nay, let me have it. I long. Cleontes. Why, that was when three crowd months had soured themselves to death. Here could, here could, I could make thee open thy white hand, and clap thyself, my love, and then do this art. <laughs> thou utter, I am yours forever. <laughs> Oh, Hermione, tis grace indeed. Why, lo you now, I spoke the purpose twice. The one forever earned by a, uh, for a loyal husband, the other for some while a friend. Takes Pluxinus by the hand. We on to side. Too hot, too hot. To mingle friendship as far as mingling bloods, I have tremor cordis upon me. On me. Tremor cordis? Tremors on my heart. Huh. My heart dances, but not for joy, not joy. Some tame may a free face put on, drive a liberty from his hardness, from bounty, fertile bosom, and will become ancient. It may a grant put pe to be peddling palms and pinching fingers, as now they are, making practice smiles, as in looking glass, and they then to sigh as twere, the more the mort of a de of dear. The mort of dear? Mort of the dear? Mort of the dear. Lord of the dear? Lord of the dear. The horn sounding death of a deer during the hunt. Ah. 
Oh, that is entertainment. My bosom likes not. My noir brows, Mamilius. Art thou my boy? Mamilius, I, my lord. Yes, he's your prince and son person. I, I don't get this still. Why is he not considered your son in the thing? Art thou my boy? I hope that means your son. <laughs> now it says, I fix. Why, that's my bout buck. Oh. What hast thou smushed thy nose? They say that it is a copy of mine. Come, Captain, we must meet, be neat, not neat, but cleanly, Captain. And yet the steer, the he heifer, and the calf are all called neat, still virginally, virginally, upon his palm, to Amelius. How now, you're, you wanton calf, art thou my calf? Amelius, yes, if you will, my lord. Leontes, thou wantest a rough passion, the shoots I have to be fool like me. Yet they say we are almost like an egg. Women say so. Thou wilt say anything. But were they false as over dyed blacks, as winds and waters? False as thy sire to be wished, thy one that fixes. Now born twixt his and mine, yet twere, were true to say that spoil were like me. Come, Sir Page, look on me with your welkin eye. Sweet villain, most serious my call up. Can thy damn? May to be. May be. Affection, thy intention is to center. Thou dost make possible things not so held. Communicate with dreams. How can this be? Hmm. With what real, with what with, <laughs> with what's unreal, thou collective art and fellow is nothing. Then tis very credent that thou mayest co-join with something, and thou dost, and that be on commission. And I find it, and that to infection my brains the hardening of my brows. Plixinus. What means Cecilia? Hermione. She something seems unsettled. Plixinus. How now, my lord? Leontes. What cheer? How is it with you, my best brother? Hermione. You look as if you held a brow of much distraction. Are you moved, my lord? Leontes. No. In good earnest, how someone, sometimes nature will betray its folly, its tenderness, and make itself a, a pastime to harden bosoms. Looking on the lines of my boy's face, my thoughts, I did recoil twenty-three years. And I saw myself unbreached in my green velvet coat, my jagger muzzle. Yes, it should bite its master so prove, as ormonds oft do, so dangerous. How like me thought I then so as to its colonel, this squash, this gentleman, to Amelius. Mine honest friend, will you take eggs for money? What? <laughs> Amelius. No, my lord, I'll fight. Leontes, you will. Why? Happy, be, happy man's be a dole, to Blixen's. My brother, are you so fond of your young prince as we, we do seem to be of ours? Plixinus. If at home, sir, he's all my exercise, my mirth, my matter. Now my sworn friend, and thine, then mine enemy, my parasite, my soldier, statesman, statesman, all. He makes a July day short as December, and with his varying childishness cures in me, thoughts that would thick my blood. Neontis. So stands a squire of office with me. We two will walk, my lord, and leave you to gra your graver steps. Hermione, how thou lovest a show in our brother's welcome. Let us let what is dear in Sicily be cheap next to thyself and my young, young rover. He's apparent to my heart. Hermione, if you, sh if you would seek us, we are your we are yours to the garden. Shells tend you there. Leontes, to be to your own bent dispose you, you'll be found, be beneath you the sky. Aside. I am angry now, though you perceive me not how I have given line. Go to, go to! How she holds up the neb to build to him, and arms her with the boldness of a wife, to her allowing husband. Exult. Hermione and Felixie. Gone already, inch thick, inch thick, knee deep over the heads and ears of forked one. To a millis. Go play, boy, play. My mother's plays, and play too, but so disgrace a part, whose issue will hiss to me, me to my grave. Contempt and clamor will be mine now. To Amelius, go play, boy, play. Aside, there have been the whole I, or I have much to see of cuckolds there are now. And many a man there is, even at this present now, while I speak, holds his wife by the arm. That little thinks she has been sleeced in absence. And his pond fish by his next step, neighbor, by Sir Smile, his neighbor. Nay, there's comfort in it while there's other men, while other men have gates, and those gates open as mine against their will. Shoot all the spirits that have revolted wives, the tent of mankind would hang themselves. This physic for the nun, 
His body plant that was strike force is predominant, and tis powerful think it from east to west, north and south. Be concluded no barricado for belly know it for a belly. Know it it will let in and out the enemy with bag and baggage, many thousands on have the disease and feel not, to Amelius. How now, boy? Amelius. I am like you, they say. <laughs> Leontes. Why, that's some comfort. What? Camilla there? Camilla. Coming forward. Aye, my lord. Camilla, you are the other... Duke? Lord. Lord, you are the lord, isn't you? You are the lord. This one. Check real quick. Yeah. Glorizel. Glorizel. Camilla, ay, good my lord. Leontes, go play him, Amelius. Thou art an honest man. Exit Amelius. So, Amelius, though, he's 23, isn't he? I mean, that's what I thought he just said. It's like, hmm, hmm. Why are you telling him to go play like a boy? I don't know. Camilla, this great sir will yet stay longer. Camilla. Yet much ado to make his anchor hold when you thou when you cast out it still came home. Leontes, did us note it? Camilla, he would not say stay at your petitions made his business war material. Leontes, did us perceive it? There he with me already whispering rounding. Cecilia is a so forth. Tis far gone. When I shall guess it guess it last. How came it, Camillo, that he did say? Camilla, all the good queens entreaty. Leontes. At the queen's be it. At the queen's be it. Good should be pertinent. But so it is, it is not. Was it taken by any understanding paid at the, but thine? For thy conceit is soaking. Will draw in more than common blocks. Not noted is it. But to uh, the finer natures, by some several of headpieces extraordinary. Lower messes were chance hearts to the business pure blind. Say. Camilla. Business, my lord. I am being most understand Bohemia stays here longer. Leontes, ha? Huh? Camillo stays here longer. Leontes, but why? Camillo, to satisfy your highness and the entreaties of our most gracious mistress. Leontes, satisfy? The entreaties of your mistress, satisfy? Let that suffice. I have treated thee, Camillo, with all nearest things to my heart, as well my chamber counsels, wherein priests like thou hast cleansed my bosom. I from thee departed thy pertinent, thy penitent reformed. But we have been deceived in thy integrity, deceived in that which seems so. Camilla, be it forbid, my lord. Leontes, to bide upon it. Thou art not honest, nor if thou inclinest that way, thou art a coward, which hopes his honesty behind, restraining from the course behind, or else thou must be counted a servant gra grafted in my serious trust, and there a negligent, or else a fool that sees a game played home, the rich stake dawn, and take us all for jest. Camilla, my gracious lord, I may be negligent, foolish, and fearful, and every one of these, no man is free, but that his negligence, his folly, fear, among the infinite doings of the world, sometimes puts forth in your affairs, my lord, if I were ever willful negligent, it was I folly, were industriously, I play the fool, it was my negligence, not weighing the well end, if ever fearful to do a thing where I issued, by the issue doubted, Whereof the execution did cry out against the non-performance, twas a fear of which often fakes the wisest. These, my lord, are such a loud infirmities that honesty is never free of. But beseech your grace to be plainer with me. Let me know I a trespass by his own visage. If I then deny it, tis none of mine. No, tis. <laughs> have you not seen Camillo? But thus past doubt, doubt, you have, or your eyeglass is thicker than a cuckold's arm. Or heard. Hi, Maggie. How are you? We are reading the Winter's Tale. How are you doing? I hope you're well. We are reading the Winter's Tale. We are talking between the King of Cecilia and Leontes. No, yeah, Camillo, who is a Lord of Cecilia, and Leontes has some suspicions about his wife, Hermione, and his brother? Question mark. Calixtines. So he just doesn't like how they're close, being close. But I mean, like, she's just being a kind person, you know, being a kind queen. Like, no, 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 you should stay in everything, you know, you should have a, you should either stay here, you'll be my prisoner. So either you can be my guest or you'll be my prisoner and everything, you know? And it's just like, fine, fine, I'll be your guest and everything. It's like, he's like, you're staying here. And like, well, I suppose I will be staying here for another time. <laughs> so, yeah.
Thanks, thanks, thanks. <laughs> okay, Leontes. Have you not seen Camillo? Leontes is the king, by the way. King of Cecilia. But that that's past doubt. So you have your eyeglasses thicker than a horn or hurt for to a vision so apparent rumor cannot be mute or thought for a cogitation. Co 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 Besides, I am the man that does not think my wife is slippery. My life is slippery. <laughs> if thou wilt confess, or else be impudently negative, to have nor eyes nor ears nor thoughts, and say my wife's a hobby horse, deserves a name as rank as any flax wench. Flax wench that puts before her troth plate, say it and justify it. Camilla. I would not be a standard by to hear my sovereign mistress clouded with so without. My present vengeance taken. Shrew my heart, she never spoke what did become you less than this, which to reiterate were sin as deep as that, though true. Leontes. Is whispering nothing? Is laying cheek to cheek as me notices? Kissing with the inside lip? Stopping the career of laughter with sight? A note inf na infallible? Breaking honesty, horsing foot on foot, skulking in corners, wishing cloaks w clocks more swift, hours, min noon, midnight, and all eyes blind within the pin webs, so but there's, there's only that would unseen be wicked. Is this nothing? Seething. Why then the world and all that's in it is nothing? This covering sky is nothing, Bohemia is nothing, my wife is nothing, nor nothing have these nothing. If this be nothing. Yeah, he he's just like, hmm, hmm, there's something going on. And just like, no, Kendall is just like, hmm, I don't really think so. But, I mean, if you really think so, I mean, just say it, maybe, Camilla. Camilla, I would not stand it by. No, no. <laughs> Camilla, good my lord, be cured of this disease, opinion, and be times, for tis most dangerous. Yeah, jealousy is a bit dangerous here, buddy. And you don't know what, ha what happened to the last guy, though, and, you know, Desimona. Yeah, um, hmm, Othello kind of killed Desimona, so, um, yeah, hmm. hmm. You might want to, you know, just not do that jealousy sort of thing. Okay, thanks. Leon says, say it, be true, be, tis true. Camilla, no, no, my lord. Leon says, it is, you lie, you lie. I say thou liest, Camilla, I hate thee. Pronounce thee as a gross, loud, and mindless slave, or else hovering temporizer that canst with my with thine eyes I once see good in evil, inclining to them both. Were my wife's liver infected as her life, she would not live the running of one glass. Why do you think these things are your wife, Camilla? Who does infect her? Leon says, Why he that wears her like a metal, hanging about his neck, Bohemia if who, if I had servants true about me that bear eyes, to see like mine honor as their prophets. Their own particular thrifts, they would do that which should undo more undo doing. I and thou with this cup bearer, whom I am more from meaner form, have bent and reared to worship, who may see, plainly as heaven sees earth and, he and earth sees heaven, how I am galled, might be, be, be spice a cup, to give mine enemy a lasting wink, which draw to me more cor cordial. Cordial. I know that word. I, why did I say cordial? Camilla. Sir, my lord, I could do this and that with no rash potion, both lingering d dram that should not work maliciously like poison, but I cannot believe this crack to be in my dread mistress so sovereignly being honorable. I have loved thee. No, may that thy question or go rot. <laughs> Dost thou think I am so muddy, so unsettled, to put myself in this vexation? You are, though! You put this line in your own head! <sighs> Solely the purity and whiteness of my sheets, which to preserve a sleep, which being spotted as goads, thorns, nettles, tails of wasps, gives scandals to the blood of Prince my son, who I do think is mine as my and love is mine, without right moving to it. Would I do this? Could man be so You better not touch that child, I will murder you. You better not. You better not. Could man be so plunch? You better not. I will. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Go astray and respond Camilla, I must believe you, sir, and I do, and will fetch Bohemia for it. Provided that when he's removed, your highness, 
will take again your queen as your spouse, even for your son's sake, and thereby for sealing in the injury of tongues and courts and kingdom, no known and allied to yours. Leon says, Thou dost advise me, even so as I, I as I mine own course have set down, I'll give no blemish to honor her honor, none. Camilla, my lord, go then with a countenance as clear as friendship wears at a feast. Keep with Bohemia, Bohemia and with your queen. I am his cupbearer, if, if from me you have wholesome beverage. Account me not your servant. Leontes, this is all. Do it, and thou hast one half my heart. Do it not, thou spittest thy own. Camilla, I'll do it, my lord. Leontes, I'll seem, I will seem friendly, as thou, as thou hast advised me. Exit. Camilla, O miserable lady, but for me what case stand I in? I must be the poisoner of good polixenes, and my ground to do it is the obedience to the master, one who in the rebellion with himself will have all that there is to sow, too. To do the sea of promotion follows. If I could find example of thousands that have struck annoying kings and flourished after, I'll, I'd do it. I'd not do it. But since I'm no brass, no stone, no parchment, bears not one, the villainy itself will sweat. I must forsake the court. To do it, or oh no, is certain to me a big neck. Happy star reign now. Here comes Bohemia. How dare you? You're no, no, Camilla, no, 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 no. Enter Plixnes. Plixnes, aside. This is strange, me thinks, to my favor to begin to walk, not speak. To Camilla. Good day, Camilla. Oh, yeah, Plixnes is the. Uh, person who is visiting the brother. <laughs> Camilla. Hail, most royal sir, Plixies. What is the news of the court? Camilla. None real, my lord. Except that you are going to become a villain. Plixies. The king hath on him such a countenance as he has lost in the province, and a region loved as he loves himself. Even now I meet him with, met him with a customary comment. When he, wafting his eyes to the contrary, and falling a lip of much contempt, Beads from me, and so it leaves me to consider what's breeding that changes us his manners. Camilla, I dare not know, my lord. <sighs> oh no, you're not going to be another Iago, are you? I mean, I mean, you don't even seem like as good as Iago yet, but I mean, just like, why are you doing this, Camilla? Why? I mean, you have your reasons. I guess you want to be promoted and everything. <sighs> Flick scenes. How dare not? Do not. Do you know and dare not be intelligent to me that tis thereabouts? For to yourself, what do you, do you know, you must, and cannot say you dare not. Good Camillo, your changed complexions are to me a mirror which shows are me mine changed too. For I must be a party in this alteration, finding myself thus altered with it. Camillo, there is a sickness which puts some of us in distemper, but I cannot name the disease, and is caught of you that you, of you, you that yet are well. And is caught of caught of you. Plexines, how caught of me! Make me not the sighted by the basilisk. I have looked on thousands who have sped the better by my regard, but killed none so. Camilla, as you are a, certainly a gentleman there too, clerk like experience which no less adorns our gentry than our parents' noble names, no sex that we are gent sex 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 best. We are gentle, I beseech you. If you know aught which does behove my knowledge, thereof to be informed, and prison not in ignorant concealment. Camilla. I may not answer, but a sickness caught of me, and yet I well, I must be answered. Dost thou hear, Camillo? I conjure thee by all the parts of men which honor dost acknowledge, whereof the least is not suit of mine, that thou declare what indecency thou dost guess of a harm is creeping towards me. How far off, how near, which may to be prevented, if it to be, if not, how best to bear it. Camillo, sir, I will tell you, since I am charged in honor and by him that I think honorable. Therefore, mark my counsel, which must be even as swiftly followed as I mean to utter it, or both yourself and me. Cry lost, so good night. Felixes, on good Camillo. Camillo, I am appointed him to murder you. Felixes, by whom, Camillo? Camillo, by the king? Felixes, for what? Camillo, he thinks may with all confidence he wears, he swears as he had seen it, or an instrument to vice you to it, that you have touched his queen. Forbidden me. Plexies. Oh, 
let my best blood turn into a and jelly, and my name be yoked to this, to this betray the best. Turn then my, the, my precious reputation to a savor that may strike the duel's nostril, where I arrive and my approach be shunned. Nay, hated too, worse than the great infection that ere was heard or read. Camilla, swear his thought over. By each particular star in heaven and by all their influences, we may as well forbid the sea to for to obey the moon, and or by oath remove or counsel shake the fabric of his folly, whose foundation is piled upon his faith, and will contain the sanding of his body. Flex knees. How should this grow? Camilla. I know not, but I am sure it is safer to avoid what's grown than question how it is born. I had to get on my phone because I had the communicator was messing up. <laughs> oh, giddy. Giddy, it's okay, we're Polixenes and Camillo, Camillo is, uh, hmm, hmm. wait, ha were you able to hear everything? Have you been able to hear everything? Wait, have you, have you been, have you been able to hear everything thus far? Question mark? Thus far, Ezra. Shakespeare! Brooks, he's hushing the squirrel. Camillo, I know not, but I am sure to savor to avoid what's grown and question how it is born. If therefore you dare trust my honesty that lies enclosed in this trunk, which you shall bear along in pawn to wait tonight, your followers I will whisper to the business and will be by twos and threes and self post ones. No, I was trying to get a computer to work, I just got on the phone. Ah, okay. I will, I will run you in in a second, because it all sounds like the same. If therefore you dare trust my honesty that lies enclosed in this trunk, which you shall bear along the pond away tonight, your followers and I will, whisp I will whisper to the business, and you, and will by twos and threes at several posterns clear them of the city. For myself, I'll put my fortunes to your service, which are here by this discovery lost. But be not uncertain, for by the honor of my parents, I have uttered truth. Which, if you seek to prove, I dare not stand by, nor shall you be safer than one condemned by the king's own mouth, thereon his execution sworn. Flick sneeze. I do believe thee. I saw his heart in his face. Give me thy hand, be pilot to me, and thy places shall still neighbor mine. My ships are ready, and my people did expect my hence departure two days ago. This jealousy is for pre precious creature. As she's rare, it must be great, and his person's mighty, must be violent. And as he does conceive his dishonor by a man which ever professed to him, why his revenges must that be made more bitter. Fear or shades me. Good expedition, my friend, and comfort the gracious queen part of his theme, but nothing of this ill-taken suspicion. Come, Camilla, I respect thee as a fa father, if thou bearest my life off hence. Let's avoid. Camilla, it is mine authority to command the keys of all posturns. Please, your highness, take away the urgent hour. Come away, sir. Alright. So, the king of Bohemia, or Cecilia, 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 yeah, king of Cecilia, believes that this guy, the king of Bohemia, Polixenes, is cheating with his wife, Hermione. <laughs> and he wants to get this, you know, like, you know, situated. You know, it's like, are you actually cheating on me or are you not? So he gives a job to this guy named Camillo, who wants the position that he's, you know, he could be promoted if he's able to actually push away, you know, this Bohemia guy, right? But, you know, he has to lie a little bit. So he tells, instead of trying to, like, tell Plexenes, he has to go confront the king about, you know, this whole ordeal, you know, clear his name and everything. He's like, oh no, the king's gonna kill you now, and he's gonna kill you tonight. <laughs> and Plexenes says, what? 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 Why? And then it's like, jealousy, jealousy. Jealousy. <laughs> Which, I mean, Leontes is very jealous. I mean, like, Camilla had to literally say little to nothing. And, like, Camilla's, like, trying to, like, you know, help Bohemia a bit, but it's like, nope, 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 I will not believe you. I believe you're lying to me, and I want proof that he is actually cheating on me, you know? So you must go and actually do this. And so that's where you are. Camilla just now made, no, yeah, Camilla just now made Polixenes leave. Or, you know, escape. And so now we're heading on to act one scene three. No, act two scene one. Ah, excellent. Let's see, because that was like a long scene. Let's see, three scenes, three scenes. Oh wow, these are really short scenes. Oh, short acts. That's nice. <laughs>
Act 2, Scene 1. Enter Hermione, which is the Queen of Sicilia, which is where we are. Familius, who is the Prince of Sicilia, or also the son of Hermione and Leontes. Ladies, Leontes, who is the King of Sicilia. Antigonus, Lord Antigonus. Are you another Lord? Maybe. Maybe you are. Antigonus. Yeah, you're another Lord of Sicilia. Cool. Great. Awesome. Great. Hermione, take the boy to you, so he so troubles me. Tis past enduring. One lady, come, my gracious lord, shall you, shall I be your playfellow? Familius, no, I'll none of you. One lady, why, my sweet lord? Familius to to one lady, you'll kiss me hard and speak of me as if I were a baby still. To lady too, I love you better. <laughs> to lady, and why so, my lord? Familius, not for because your brows are blacker, yet black brows they say become so someone best, so that there be not so much hair there, but it's in a semicircle, or a half moon made with a pen. <laughs> to lady, who taught this? <laughs> Mamilius, I learned it out of women's faces. Pray now, what color are your eyebrows? Lady to blue, my, my lord. Mamilius, nay, that's a mock. I have seen a lady's nose, and that has in blue, but not her eyebrows. Lady one, hark ye, the, the queen your mother rounds his pace. We shall present our services to a fine new prince of one of these days, and then you'd want on with us if we would have you. <laughs> Lady two, she is spread of late into a goodly bulk. Good time encounter her. Hermione, what wisdom store amongst you? Come, sir, now I am for you again. Pray you sit by us and tell us a tale. Milius, merry or shall, sad shall it be? Hermione, as merry as I will. Mamilius, a sad tale's for best for winter. Oh no! I have one sprites and I have one of sprites and goblins. Hermione, let's have that then, good sir. Come on, sit down. Come on, do your best to frighten me with your sprites. You're powerful at it. Mamilius, there was a man. Hermione, nay, come sit down. Gestures Mamilius to sit. Then on. Mamilius. Dwelt by a churchyard, I will tell it softly. Not cricket shall not hear it. Hermione, come on then and give it, give it me thine ear. Leontes, antagonist, and the lords come forward. Leontes, was he met there? His train, Camilla with him. Lord, behind the top of pines, I met them. I never saw I, me I never, never saw I men go on so on their way. I hide them even to the ships. Leontes, how blessed that I am I in the just censure of my true opinion. A lack for some lesser knowledge, how cursed in being so blessed. There may be in the cup spider steeps that one may drink up the pot, and yet partake no venom, for his knowledge is not infected, but if one present the bored ingredient to his eye that make known how he hath drunk, his cracks his forge, his sides with violent hefts, I have drunk and I have seen the spider. Camillo was his help in this, his ponder, and his a plot against my life and my crown. All is true that his mistress trusted. That false villain who I employed as a pre employed by him, he has discovered my design, and I remain a pinched thing. Yeah, a very trick for them to play at will. How can the postern so easily open? Uh, I feel like I read this wrong. Maybe, maybe Camilla was just trying to escape with looking me. Did he really say he was going to kill him? I mean, he really did seem angry about it. I think he was planning to kill him. I don't know. So now they're like, oh my gosh. Mm. Lord, by his great authority, which often has no less prevailed than so on your command. Leontes, I know it too well. To Hermione, give me the boy. I am glad you don't nurse him, though he does bear some signs of me. Yet you have too much blood in him. Hermione, what is this? Sport? Leontes, to the ladies. Marry the boy, hence he shall not come about her. Away with him. To Hermione, and let her sport herself, with that she's big with, and for what his blixings, has made thee swell thus. Oh no, he thinks Flixie's got her pregnant. Oh no. Hermione. But I'd say he has not, and I'll be sworn you believe you I sing, however you lean the in a wayward. Leontes, you, my lords, look on her, mark her well. Be but about to say, she is a goodly lady, and t the justice of your hearts will there to add, tis pity she's not honest, honorable. Praise her, but for his her, this her without door form, which on my faith deserves high speech and straight the shrug. 
the hum or ha these pretty petty brands that calamity doth use oh i am out that mercy does for calamity will sear its virtue itself these shrugs these hums and haws when you have said go goodly she's goodly come between ear ear and you can say she's honest but be it known from him that has most cause to grief it should be she's an adulteress <laughs> hermione should a villain say so the most replenished villain in the world he would much more villain you my lord but do not do not do but mistake leontes you have mistook my lady polixenes for leontes what o oh, thou thing which i will not call a creature of thy place lest barbarianism barbarianism making me the precedent should i like language used to all degrees and mannerly distinguish distinguishment leave out betwixt the prince and beggar i have said she's an adulteress I have said with whom, more she's a traitor, and Camillo is a federary with her, and one that knows what she should shame to know herself, but with her most vile principle that she's a bedswerver, even as bad as those that vulgar give both titles, a the, the privy to this their late escape. Hermione, no, by my life, privy is not to this. How will this grieve you when you shall come to clear knowledge that you thus have published me? Gentle, my lord, you scarce me right, hear me thoroughly, thoroughly, than to say you did mistake. No, just no. If I mistake in those foundations which I build upon, the centre is not big enough to bear a schoolboy's top. To a lord, away with her to prison. He who shall, shall shall speak for her is far off guilty that he that he speaks. Hmm. Hermione, there is some ill planet reigns. I must be patient till the heavens look with an aspect more favourable. Good, my lords, I am not prone to weeping as our sex commonly are, the want of which vain do, perchance, shall dry your pities. But I have the honourable grief lodged here with my, which burns more than tears drown. Beseech you all, my lords, with thoughts of so qualified as charities, shall best instruct you to measure me, and so the kings will be performed. The guards delay in removing Carmine. They're like, I, I don't really want to do this. I, I don't know about this. <laughs> Leontis, shall I be heard? Hermione, who is it that goes with me? Beseech your highness, my woman may be with me, for you see, my plight requires it. Yeah, her, her, her plight, her, her, she needs someone to go with her. <laughs> to the woman, do not weep, good folks, good fools. There is no cause. When you shall know your mistress has deserved prison, then abound in tears. As I come out, this action I know now go on is for my better grace. To the Londis. Adieu, my lord. I never wish to see you sorry. Now I shall, I trust I shall. My woman, come. You have leave. Exit Hermione under guard and with her woman. <laughs> Leontes. Go, do our bidding, hence. Lord, beseech your highness, call the queen again. Antagonist. Be sure what you do, sir, lest your justice prove violence in which the three great ones suffer. Yourself, your queen, your son. Lord. For her, my lord, I dare my life lay down, and will do it, sir. Please you, you to accept it, and that the queen is spotless in the eyes of heaven and to you. I mean, in this which you accuse her. Antigonus, if it proved she's otherwise, I, I'll keep my stables where I lodge my wife. I'll go in couples with her, then when I feel and see her, no father trust her. For each, wo for every inch of woman in the world, ay, every damn woman's flesh is false if she be. Leontus, hold your pieces. Lord, good my lord, Antigonus, it is for you we speak, not for ourselves. You are abused by some putter on that will be damned for it. Would I know the villain, and I would land, land damn him. Be she on or flawed that I have three daughters, the eldest is eleven, the second is third, nine, and some five. If this tru prove true, they'll pay for it. By, an, uh, by mine honor, I'll get all, them all. Fourteen they shall not see. To bring false generations, they are co heirs, and I had rather glib myself, and they should not produce fair issues. Leontus, cease no more, you smell with this business with a sense of cold, as is dead man's nose, but I do see it and feel it, as you feel doing thus. Grabs Antagonus's beard, <laughs> and see with all the instruments that feel. Antigonus, if it be so, we need no grave to bury honesty. There is not a grain of it in the space to sweeten the holy whole judge yours. Leontus, what? I lack credit? Lord, I ra had rather you did lack than I, my lord. Upon this ground, and more it would content me to have her honor true than your suspicion. Be blamed for it how you might. 
Leontes. Why, what we, what need we commune with the, you of this, but rather follow our forceful instigation? Our prerogative calls out for your counsels by our natural goodness and process, which, if you stupefied or seeming in so own skill, cannot or will not relish the truth like us. Inform yourselves we need not know more of your advice. The matter of the loss to gain of ordering on it is all properly ours. Antigonus, and I wish, my liege, that you had only in your silent judgment tried it without a more overture. Leontes, how can that be? <laughs> Yeah, I've considered it. Leontes, how can that be? Either thou art most ignorant by age, or thou wert born a fool. Camillo's flight, added to the familiarity, which is its gross ever touched conjecture that lacks sight only, not for operation, but only seeing all the circumstances made up to the deed, doth push on this proceeding yet for greater confirmation for in the act of this importance. Twere most piteous to be wild, I had dispatched and post the sacred Delphos to Apollo's, Apollo's temple, Clemenides and Dion, whom you know are self sufficiency, now for the oracle, they will bring all the, whose spiritual counsel had shall or spur me. Have I done well, Lord? Well done, my lord. Leontis, though I am satisfied and need no more than what I know, yet shall the oracle give rest to the minds of others, such as he whose ignorant credibility will not come up to the truth. So if we thought it good for our free person, she should be confined, lest that treachery of the two fled hence. Be left to perform. Come, follow us. We are here to speak in public, for, bu for this business will raise all us all. Antigonus aside, to laughter as I take it. <laughs> If the good truth were known. Ah. If only the good truth were known. If only. Hmm. Enter Polina and Gentleman. Polina is the wife of the guy from Bohemia, right? No. Wife to Antagonist, who is one of the lords. Ah, ah. Polina, the keeper of the prison, called to him, let him have knowledge who I am. Exit gentleman. Good lady, no co no court in Europe is good too good for thee. Which dost thou then in prison? Enter jailer and gentleman. Now, good sir, you know me, do you not? Jailer. For a worthy lady, and one who have much I honor. Polina, pray you then conduct me to the queen. Jailer. I may not, madam, to the contrary I have expressed commandment. Polina. Here is due to lack of honesty and honor from... The axes of gentle visitors. Is it lawful to pray you to see her woman? Any of them? Amelia? Jailer. So please you, madam, to put apart these to your attendants. I shall bring Amelia forth. Polina. I pray now call her. Withdraw yourselves. Ex gentlemen and attendants. Jailer. And madam, I must present at your conference. I must be present at your conference. Polina. Well, be it so, pretty. Ex jailer. Ah, he is much so. So you such. Here is such a dude to make no stain of stain of passing coloring. And to gen jailer and Amelia. True gentlewoman, how fares our gracious lady? Amelia. So I make sure. No, it's not. Who's Amelia? Wait, who are you, Amelia? A lady attending on Hermione. Oh, okay. So it's one of the ladies on Hermione. Okay, I was like, wait a second. I was like, wait a second. That's not her name. So that's one of the ladies of Hermione. How fares our gracious lady? As well as one so great and forlorn, so forlorn may hold together on her frights and griefs, which never tender lady hath borne greater. She is something before her time delivered. Plena, a boy. Amelia, a daughter and a goodly babe, thus see and like to live. The queen receives much comfort in it, saying, My poor prisoner, I am as innocent as you. Plena. I dare be sworn these dangerous, unsafe wounds of the king. Beshrew them. He must be told on it, and he shall. The office becomes a woman's best. I'll take it upon me. If I prove honey mouth, let my tongue blister, and never should my red looked anger beat the trumpet any more. Pray you, Amelia, commend my my best obedience to the queen. If she dares trust me with a little babe, I'll show it to the king. The king and I take to be your advocate to allow us. Here, I'll touch the child, I swear, king, if you do. Hmm. Hmm. We do not know how you may soften the sight of the child. The silence often of pure innocence persuades when speaking veils. Amelia. 
Most worthy madam, your honor and your goodness is so evident that your free undertaking cannot miss a thriving issue. There is no lady living so to meet the great errand. Please, your ladyship, to visit the next room, I will presently acquaint the queen of your most noble offer, who would but today a hammer of the design, but burst not tempt a minister of honor, lest she should be denied. Polina. Tell her, Amelia, I'll use that tongue I have. If wit flow from it as boldness from my bosom, let not be doubted I shall be good. I shall do good. Amelia. Now be you blessed for it. I'll to the queen. Please you come something nearer. Jailer. To Polina. Madam, if it, ple if it please the queen, send the babe. I know not what I, I shall incur to pass it, having no warrant. Polina. You need not fear it, sir. This child was a prisoner to the womb, and is by law a process of great nature thence. Freed and enfranchised, not a party to the anger of a king, nor guilty of, if any, the trespass of a queen. Jailer. I do believe it. Polina, do not you fear. Upon my honor, I will stand betwixt you and danger. No. <laughs> Polina seems so cute. Mm? Act 2, scene 3. Leontis. Enter Leontis. No, Leontis. No night, no day, no rest. It is but weakness to bear that matter thus mere weakness. If the cause were not in being part of the cause, she, the adulteress, for a heart that clean, is quite beyond my arm, without out the blank and level of my brain, plot proof. But she can hook to me. But she, I can hook to me. Say that she were gone, given to the fire, if mortality of my rest might come to me again. Who's there? Not just servant. My lord? You know, just how's the boy? Servant. He took good rest tonight. Tis hope his sickness is discharged. Oh, he got sick, poor boy. <laughs> now, just to see his hope, nobleness, is conceiving this honor of his mother, his straight decline droops to him deeply, fastened and fixed his shame on himself, threw off his spirit, his appetite, sleeping downright languish. Leave me solely. Go, see how affairs. Of course, it's gonna be sad. It's his mother that you sent to prison. Exit the servant. Fie, fie, no thought of him. The very thought of my revenge is that way recoil upon me, and himself too mighty in his parties, his lions. Let him be until time may serve, for presence for reven vengeance, take it on her. Camilla and Plixness laugh at me, and make their past on my, on my sorrow. They should not laugh if I could reach them, nor shall she within my power. And to Polina, with baby, oh, the little baby, baby, and Tigonus, lords and servants. Oh, baby! <laughs> lord, you must not enter. Polina, nay, rather, my good my lords, be second to me. Fear you this tyrannous passion more lasts than the queen's life, a gracious innocent soul, more free than he is jealous. Antigonus, that's enough. Servant, madam, he hath not slept tonight, commanded no, none should come at him. Plain enough. Not so hot, good sir, I come to bring him sleep. To such as you that creep like shadows by him, and do sigh at each of his, ne his needles heavings, such as you nourish the cause of his weakening. I... I do come with words of medical is true, honest as either to purge him that humor that presses him to a sleep. Meltus to Polina taking note notice of the voice. So. Hello? Hi. I am life's That's like that. Bye. Little. Okay. Back. Okay. Presses him from sleep. Leontis to Polina. Leon. Leontis to Polina, taking notice of the voice. What noise there? Oh, Polina, no noise, my lord, but needful conference. Bug some gossips from your highness. Leontis, how? Away with that dexterous lady, antagonist! I charge thee that she should not come about me. I knew she would. It's not right. Put you back on. Okay, I have to make sure it's still like, hello. Mm. Antigonus, I told her so, my lord, on your displeasure's peril on mine, she should not visit you. Leon does, what canst not rule her? Paulina, from all the sonnets you can in this, unless you take the course that you have done, commit me for committing honor. Trust it, she shall not rule me. Antigonus, 
Elihu now you hear when she will take the rain I, I let her run. But she's not she'll not stumble. Helena, good my liege, I come, and I beseech you hear me for professes and professes myself your loyal servant, your physician, your most obedient counsellor, yet that dares to appear in so confronting your evils, than such as most seem yours. I say I come for your good queen. Neantis. Good queen. Helena, good queen, my lord, good queen, I say it, good queen. And would by combat make her good, so were I a man the worse about you. Now just force her sent hence. Plana, let him that makes the trifles of his eyes first hand me on my own accord all off, but first I'll do my errand. The good queen, for she is good, hath brought you forth a daughter. Here it is, commends it to you your blessing. Lenny down the baby. Now it is out a mankind witch hence with her out the door, a most intelligent thing bod. Plana, not so I am as ignorant as that as you, and I am so entirely me, and not no less honest, then you are mad, which is enough I warn as the world goes to pass more honest. Leon does. Traitors, will you not push her out? To antagonists, give her the bastard. Thou dotard, thou art woman tired, unroosted by thy dame, proletier. Take up the hus bastard, take it up, I say, give it to thy crone. Cleena, to antagonists, forever unbearable. And be thy hands, if thou takest a princess, and be four spaces which he has put put upon it. Oh, jeez. Oh. Now tis, he dreads the wife. Plena, so I would you did. Then toward past all thou, you'd call your children yours. Now tis, a nest of traitors. And seconds, I am none by this good light. I am none by this good light. A still note. Oh. Polina, no I nor any, but one that he is that himself, for he the sacred honor of himself, his queens, his hopeful sons, his babes, his trades to Sander, whose sting is sharper than the swords, and will not for us the case now stands as a curse. He cannot be compelled to it once removed, the root of his pain which is rotten, as ever oak to stone was sound. Excuse me. Oh. Neontis. A callet, a boundless tongue, who laughed be Hath, who late hath beat her husband, and now bates me. The spread of mine is none of mine. This issue afflicts me. Hence with it and dip, together with a dam, commit them to the fire. Polina, it is yours, and might we lay the old plover to your challenge, so like you tis the worst. Behold, my lords, although the prince be little, the whole manner and copy of the father, I knows lit the trick of frown his forehead, nay, the valley, the pretty dimples on his chin and cheeks, his smile is a very mold of frame of hand and nail finger, and thou good god is nature which hast made it so like him that got it. If thou hast the ordering of the mind too, amongst all colours, no yellow in it, lest she suspects that he as he does, her children, not her husband's. Now does a gross hag to antagonist, and Lozel, thou art worthy to be hanged and will thou will not stay her tongue. Antagonist, hang all the husbands that cannot do that feat. You'll leave yourself hardly one subject. Now just once more take her hence. Helena, a worse worthy and natural lord can do no more. Now just I'll have thee but Helena, I care not. It is a heretic that a heretic that makes the fire, not she which burns in it. I'll call not, not I'll not call you tyrant, but this most cruel use of your queen not able to reduce more accusation than your own weak hinged fancy, something savours of tyranny and it would no noble you, yes, scandalous of the world. Leontes, to antagonist, on your allegiance out of the chamber with her, where I tyrant, where, where were her life? She do, durst not call me so if she didn't know me one. Away with her, plain enough to lords. I pray you do not push me, I'll be gone. To look, look to your babe, my lord. Tis yours, Jove send her a better guiding spirit. What needs these hands? You are that are thus so tender over this follies will never do him good. No, one of you. So, so farewell, we are gone. Exit. Leontes, thou traitor hast set on thy wife to this, my child, away with it. Even thou that hast a heart so tender over it, take it hence, and see that it is instantly consumed with fire. Even thou and none of them, you little shite, even thou and but no, none None but thou, take it up straight within this hour, bring me the wood, tis done, and by good testimony I'll seat thy life. With what thou call 
else calls mine. If thou refuse, and will can counter with my wrath, say so. The bastard brains of these proper hands shall I dash out. Go, take it to fire, for thou settest on thy wife. <sighs> Antagonist, I do not, sir. These lords I know of well as if they please can clear me in it. Lords, we can, my lord, royal liege. He is not guilty of her coming hither. Now, just do liars all! Jesus! Dude! Calm down! Lords, beseech your highness, give us better credit. We have always truly served you, and your beseech so to seem of us. And on our knees we beg and recompense our dear services, past and to come, that you do change his purpose, which, being so horrible, so bloody, must lead on to some foul issue. We all kneel. Leontes, I am a feather for each wind that blows. Shall I live on to see this bastard kneel and call me father? Better burn it now than curse it then. Be it, let it live, it shall not neither. You, sir, come you hither, near that have been so terribly officious with the Lady Marjorie, your midwife there, to save this bastard's life, which is a bastard. So show us his beard's grey, what will you venture to save this brat's life? Antagonist, anything, my lord. Thy ability may undergo a nobleness impose at least as much upon the little blood which I have left to save the innocent. Anything possible. Now does shall I be possible. Swear by the sword thou wilt perform my building. Antagonist place his hand on the hilt of his sword. I will, my lord. Now does mock and perform. Seest thou, for the fail of any point in it shall not only be death to thyself, but to lewd tongued wife for a fool. Who for this time we pardon? We enjoin thee, as thou a liege man to us, and that thou carriest female bastard hence, and that thou bear it to, so to some remote and desert place, quite out of our dominions, and that thou there leave, and that there thou leave it, without it more mercy, to it for it owns protection and favor of the primate. No, as by strange fortune it came to us, I do in justice charge thee on thy soul in peril and thy body's torture that thou commend it strangely to some place where change may nurse or end it. Take it up. Oh, me. Antagonist. Antigonus, I swear to do this, though present death had been more merciful. Come on, poor babe. Takes up baby. Some powerful spirits instruct the kites and ravens. To be thy nurses, wolves and bears, they say, passing the savagesness inside that hath done, like officers' pity. Challenges. Sir, be prosperous in more than the sea does require. To thee, and thus against the cruelty fight on thy side. Poor thing, condemned to us. Exit with child. <laughs> not the baby. Now, does no one not rear another issue? Enter servants. <laughs> Well, too bad, you're gonna get another issue. Servants, please, your highest post from the, those sent the oracle or come an hour since. Timon and Dion, being well arrived to Delphos, and on both landed, ha hasting to the court. Servants. That's it? What? So please, your sir, the speed hath beyond account. What? What was that? This is enter a servant. Now, just 23 days. They have been absent. His good speed foretells to the great Apollo suddenly will have the truth of, it, of this appear. I pray your lord, some of the session that we may reign, our most disloyal lady, for as she hath been publicly accused, so shall she have a just and open trial. For she, while she lives, my heart will be a burden to me. Leave me and think upon my bidding. Come and I can do for you guys. Yeah, you're a moral lord, just as you Jeez. Dude! You're not cool, man. You're not cool. I can promise you that. You're not cool. I hope you can still hear me. I, 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 I feel like you cannot hear me. But, you know, I, I think you can hear me because I said you can hear me and everything. So I, I just hope that you can hear me. Eh. Act 3, scene 1. Enter Clemonas and Dion. Clemonas. The climate's delicate and the air most sweet. The fertile the isle. The temple must surpassing the common praise of this. Dion, I shall report for most of the coffee, the celestial's habit, and he thinks that I shall should charm them in the reverence of the grave wares of sacrifice. How ceremonious, solemn, and unearthly it was offering. Hmm. Clemonis. 
But of all the bursts in the air, the deafening voice of the oracle, Kin to Joe Sundra. So surprised my son that I was not. I'm gonna just check real quick to make sure y'all can hear me. I just, I just, I just wanted to check real quick. I just, I'm gonna check real quick. But of all bursts and ear deafening voice of the world while kin to Jove Sunder to so surprise my sense that I was I was nothing. So... Uh my life I mean I hear noise. But this is not I'm live. Okay, cool, I am live. Hey, yay! That's really quick. Okay. Cool. Great. Cool. Great. Cool. 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 Let's clear this. But of all the bursts in the ear deafening voice of Oracle, Kin to Joe Sunder, so surprised my sense that I was nothing. Dion. If the event of the journey prove as successful to the Queen, oh, be it so, as it hath been to us, rare, pleasant, speedy, the time is worth us on it. Use on it. Clemonas. Great Apollo, turn all to the best. These proclamations so forcing faults upon Hermione. I like it. Little like it. I little like. Dion. The violent carriage of it will clear or the end of business with an oracle. Thus, by Apollo's great divine seal up, the shall contents discover something rare. Even then, we'll rush knowledge. Go, fresh horses, and gracious be the issue. Fresh horses. My wet western is just aimed either at horse or off edge. Yikes. Yeah, they're like, wait a second. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Act 3, Scene 2. Enter Leontes, Lords, and Officers. Leontes, this session to our great grief. Okay, so Leontes is King, Lords, yeah, and Officers. This session to our great grief we pronounce even pushed against our hearts. The party tried, the daughter of a king, our wife, and one of us too much love. Let us be cleared of this being of being tyrannous, since we so openly proceed in justice and shall have due course, even to the guilt or purgation. Produce a prisoner. Officer, it is his highness's pleasure that the queen appear in person here in court. Enter her my trial with Polina and ladies. And Polina is one of the other ladies at first. Leontes, read the indictment. Officer, Hermione, queen to worthy Leontes, king of Sicilia, thou art here, here accused and arraigned of high treason in committing adultery of Plixenes, king of Bohemia, and conspiring with Camilla to take away the life of a sovereign lord, the king, the, thy royal husband, the pretense whereof. The being, by circumstances, partly laid open. Thou, Hermione, contrary to the faith and allegiance of a true subject, didst counsel and aid them, for their better safety, to fly away by night. Hermione, since what am I to say but that be, be, that, be but that which contradicts my accusation and the testimony I impart to no other but what comes from myself, it shall scarce boot me to say not guilty. My integrity being counted falsehood shall, as I express it, be so received. But thus, the powers divine behold our humane actions, as they do, I doubt not but then, but innocence shall make false accusations worse, and tyranny tremble at patience. You, my lord, best know whom, at least, we will seem to do so my past life, hath been a content contentant, as chaste as true as I am now unhappy, which is more than history can pattern, though it abides and plays in the spectators. For behold me, a fellow of the royal bed, which owe a moiety of the throne, the great, a great king's daughter, the mother of a hopeful prince, here standing to prate and to and talk of for life of honor for, who please to come he, and hear, for life I prize it as I weigh grief which I would spare, for honor tis de der derivative from me to mine, and only thy assent for I appeal to your own conscience, sir, before Plixenes came to your count court how I was in grace, how merited to be so, since he came with one encounter so incurrent I have strained to disappear thus, if one job be beyond the bound of honor or her act in act or will, that way inclining hardened to be the hearts of all that can hear me. My my nearest kin cry fie upon my grave. You know, I never heard yet that any of these publishers' vices wanted less impudence to gain say what they did than to perform it first. Hermione, that's true enough. Though it's his saying, so not due to me. Now, it says, you will not own it. 
Hermione, more than mistress of which comes to me in my name, a fault I must not at all acknowledge. For Flixney is with whom I am accused. I do not confess I loved him as in her honor he required. With such a kind of love as might become a lady like me, with such with love, even such and so no other, so as yourself commanded, which not to have done, I think that he had been in me, both disobedience and gratitude to you and toward your friend, whose love had spoke even in sense it could speak from the infants freely that it was yours. Now for conspiracy I know not how it tastes, though it be dished for me to try how, all I know of it is that Camillo was an honest man, and that well, and why he left your court to God themselves, quoting no more than I, are ignorant. Notice, you knew of his watcher. You know what you have undertaken to do his absence. <laughs> Hermione, sir, you speak a language I understand not. My life stands in love with your dreams, which I'll lay down. Notice, your actions all my dreams. You had a bastard by Polixenes, and I but dreamed it. As you, you dreamed it. You dreamed it, and that's what you're basing this off of. You're basing all of this by some dream you had. As you were past all shame, those of your fact are so, so past all truth, which to deny concerns more than avails. For as thy brat hath been cast out, like to itself no father owning it, which is indeed more criminal than, than, to it, than it be than it, so thou shalt free our justice in those in whose easiest passage look no far less than death. Hermione, so spare your threats, the bug which you would fright me I, would I seek. To me with, can life be no commodity, the crown and comfort of my life, your favor, I do give lost, for I, for I do feel it gone, but know not how it went. My second joy and first fruits of my body from this presence I am bared, like one infectious. My third comfort starred and most unlucky from my breast, the innocent milk in it, my most innocent youth, smells. Held out to murder. Myself on every post can proclaim this trumpet with immodest hatred. The child bed privileged night, which longs to woman of all fashion. Lastly, hurried here to this place with open air before I have the strength to limit. Now, my liege, tell me what blessings I have of here alive that I should fear to die. Therefore, proceed, but yet hear this, mistake me not. No life I prize is not straw, but for mine honor, which I would free. If I shall be condemned upon surmises of all proofs living else, but what your jealousies wake, I tell you this, tis rigor and not law. Your honor's all, I do refer me to the oracle. Apollo be my judge. Lord, this is your request, as all together just, therefore bring forth, and in Apollo's name, his oracle. Excellent synopsis. Hermione, the emperor of Russia was my father. Oh, that he were alive and were beholding his daughter's freight trial, that he did but see the flatness of his misery, of my misery, yet with eyes of pity, not revenge. Enter Clement and Dion with Opsis. Opsis. You here shall swear upon the sword of justice that you, Clementine, and Dion have been both at Delphos, and from hence thence have brought the sealed up oracle by the hand delivered of great Apollo's priest, and that since then you have did not dare to break the holy seal, nor read its secrets in it. Clementines and Dion. All this we say. Lance says, break up the seals and read. Officer reads. Hermione is chaste, Polixenus blameless. Camillo is true subject. Leontes is a jealous tyrant. <laughs> Leontes is a jealous tyrant. His innocent baby truly begun, and the king shall live without an heir if that which is lost cannot is be not found. Oh no! Lords, now bless be to the great Apollo. Hermione praised. Leontes, hast thou read the truth? Yeah, thank. You just sent your daughter away. Oh my God, officer! I, my lord, even so, as a here as it is here, set down. Leontes, there is no truth in that oracle. The session shall proceed. This is a mere falsehood. You little shite! You don't want to be wrong now, servant. My lord, my the king, the king. Leontes, what is the business, servant? Oh, sir, I shall have hated to report the prince, your son, with mere conceit and fear. The queen speeds. How God, servant, is dead. 
Now, does Apollo's angry and the heavens themselves to strike at my injustice? Because you are unjust! Hermione falls. How now there? You just. The queen's son is dead! You think how now there? Oh my god! Polina, this is news is mortal to the queen! You shite! Look down and see what death is doing. Now just take her hence, her heart is but overcharged. She will recover. I have too much believed in my own suspicion. Beseech you tenderly apply to her for remedies, some remedies of life. Oh, you, Siddle, shite, you don't want to admit that you're wrong, Sil. Hmm, hmm. 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 Exit with... Oh. I was starting to like Maximilian. <laughs> Oh. Apollo, pardon my grief for faintness against thine oracle. I will reconcile me to Plixenes, new wooed my queen, call the good Camillo, whom I proclaim a man of truth and mercy for being transported by my, je by my jealousies to bloody thoughts and to revenge. I chose Camillo for the minister to poison my friend Plixenes. Oh yeah, that's why. So he was chosen to kill him off. Which had been done, but that good mind of Camillo tardied my such command. Yeah, the good Maya Camilla, because you know what? It's good. It's good. So Camilla's actually a good person. Okay. I should have, like, I should have, like, waited to connect, like, connect the dots and read it better, but Camilla was just trying to help, you know, Twix me so that he wouldn't die. <laughs> Though I, with death and with the war, did threaten and encourage him not, not doing it, and being done, he, most humane and filled with honor, to my kingly guest, unclaps my practice, quit his fortunes here, which he knew great, and to the hazard of all uncertainties and self command no richer than his honor, how he glisters so through my rust, and how his piety does my deeds make the blacker. Enter Polina. Polina, woe the wild, cut my lace, lest my heart, heart cracking and it break too. No, 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 don't, 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 don't you dare, don't. Lord, what fit is this, good lady? Polina, what steady torments cheer and tasks for me? What wheels, racks, fires? What flailing, boiling, and leads or oils? What old or new tortures must I receive, whose every word deserves to taste of my, thy worst, my mer most worst? Thy tyranny, together with working with thy jealousies, fancies too weak for boys to green and idle for girls of nine. Oh, think that what they have done, and then run mad indeed, stark mad for all thy big bygone fooleries were but spices of it. Oh, she's mad that thou betrayedest Poxenes does nothing that did but show thee a fool and constant and constant and damnable disgraceful nor was much that thou wouldest have poisoned good Camilla's honor than to have him ki kill a king poor trespasses more monsters standing by where have I reckoned the casting forth to crow thy baby daughter to be or none or little though a devil would have shed water out of fire ever done, nor is it greatly laid to thee the death of the young prince, whose honorable thoughts, thoughts high for one so tender, cleft of the heart that could conceive a gross of foolish sire, blemish his gracious dam, and this is not no laid by the, to thy answer. But the last, O oh Lord, when I say I cry, woe, the qu no, the queen, the queen, the sweetest, dearest creature's dead, and vengeance for is not dropped down yet. Oh no. Lord, the higher powers forbid. Colleen, I say she's dead, I swear it. If war nor all prevailed not, go and see. If you can bring tincture or luster in her lip, her eye, her heat hourly, or breath breathe in, I'll serve you as I would do the gods. But, oh, thou tyrant, do not repent these things, for they are heavier than all the woes can stir. Therefore, betake thee to nothing but despair. A thousand years, ten thousand years together, naked, fasting upon a barren mountain, and still winter, and storm of perpetual, could not move the gods to look that way thou went. The answer is, go on, go on, thou canst not speak too much. I have deserved all tongues to talk their bitterest. Lord to Polina, say no more, however the business goes, you to have you have made fault in the Lord your boldness of speech. Oh, oh, ah, Polina, I'm sorry for it. All faults I make when I shall come to know that I do repent. Alas, I have showed too much. Rash is a woman. He has touched the noble heart. What's gone, what's past help, should it be past grief. To all this, do not receive affliction on my petition. I beseech you, rather, let me be punished and have that you have minded you of what you should forget. Now, good my liege, sir, royal sir, forgive a foolish woman. The love I bore your queen, low fool again. I'll speak of her no more, nor of your children. I'll not remember you, my own lord. Who was lost to? Take your patience to you, and I'll say nothing. 
Now dost thou didst speak but well, when the most truth which I perceive much better than to be pity of thee. Prithee, bring me to the dead bodies of my queen and son. One grave shall be for both. Upon them shall the cause of their death appear unto shame perpetual. Once a day I'll visit the chapel where they lie, and tears shed there shall be recreation. So long as nature will bear up and sacrifice, so long I daily vow to use it. Come and lead me to these sorrows. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Act 3, Scene 3. Enter Antagonist carrying baby, followed by a mariner. Antagonist. So he's one of the lords that he was sent with the baby to go and drop her off somewhere where the elements would get her. Thou art perfect, then, our ship hath touched upon the desert of Bohemia. Marina, I, my lord, and fear we have landed in ill time. The skies look grimly and threaten the present blusters. In my conscience, the heaven with that we have in hand are angry and frowned upon. Antigonus, the sacred will is to be done. Go, get aboard, look to thy buck. I'll not be long before I call upon thee. Marina, I'll make I'll make your best your haste, and not go not too far the land. This li like to be loud weather. Besides, the place is famous for the creatures afraid to get keep upon it. Antigonus, go thou away. I'll follow instantly. Marina, I am glad at art to be so rid of business. Rid of the business. Antigonus, so he exits. Antigonus, come, poor babe. I have heard, but not believe the spirits of the dead may walk again. If such thing be, that thy mother appeared to me last night. For never was dream so like waking. To me comes a creature, sometimes her head on one side, some another. I never saw a vessel of like sorrow, so filled and so becoming in pure red robes. Like very sanctities, she did approach my cabin where I lay, thrice before me, and, gasping to begin some speech, her eyes became to spout. The fury spent and on did this break from her. Good antagonist, since fate against thy better disposition had made thy person of the throughout, my poor babe according to thine oaths, places remote enough are in Bohemia. There weep and leave it crying, and for the baby I ca is counted lost forever, Perdita. I prithee, I prithee call it, for it is this ungentle business put on thee by my lord, thou never shalt see thy wife Helena more. Oh, no. And so with shrieks she melted in there. Frighted much, I did in time collect myself, and not this was so in no slumber. Dreams are toys, yet this once, yet. Ye surreptitiously, I shall be scorched by this. I do believe Hermione hath suffered death, and that Apollo would, this being indeed the issue, of King Fluxenius, that should be here laid, either for life or death, upon the earth of its fifth right father. Blossom, speed thee well. Place the baby and scroll upon the ground. There lie, and there, there thy character. Dear these. He lays down the bundle. Which may, if fortune please, both breed thee pretty and still rest thine. Thunder! The storm begins, poor wretch. <laughs> that for thy mother's fault hath this exposed to loss to what may follow. Weep, I cannot. But my heart bleeds, and most of course am I to be by oath and joined to this. Very well. The day frowns more and more. Thou art like to have a lullaby too rough. I never saw the heavens so dim by day. The sound of a storm with thought. Horns and dogs barking. A savage clamor. Well, may I get aboard? This is to chase. I am gone forever. Exit pursued by a bear? By a bear. Oh, jeez. Enter old shepherd. Ah, here are the shepherds. Shepherds of Bohemia. Shepherd. Oh, kitty. I would there no age between ten and three and twenty, or that youth would sleep out the rest, for there is nothing in between but getting wrenches with the child, wronging the ancient sh ancient trees, stealing and fighting. Hockey you now would any but these bold brains of nineteen and two and twenty hunt this weather? They have scared away two of my best sheep, which I fear the wolf will soon sooner find than the master. If anywhere I have them, tis by the seaside, browsing in the ivory. 
Good luck, and they will shot by will. What have we here? Seeing the baby. Marcy Zahn's a baron! A very pretty baron! A boy or a child, I wonder. A pretty one, a, one, a very pretty one. Sure, some scrape. Though I am not bookish yet, I can read Waiting Gentlemen and Escape. This has been some stair work, some trunk work, some behind door work. There are women that got the plan of four things here. I'll take it up for Patty. Yet I'll tarry till my son come. He hollowed, but even now. Whoa, ho, ho! You didn't even take the scroll. Look at the scroll, man! You gotta get the scroll. Enter clown. Clown. Hello! 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 Shepherd. What art so near? If thou see a thing to talk on when thou art dead and mourn, come hither. What ails thou, man? Clown. I have seen two such insides by sea and by land, but I am not to say the sea. For it is now the sky betwixt the firmament, and that you that you cannot trust a bodkin's point. Bodkins. Oh, let me just check this over. The clown is a shepherd's son. Yeah, I was right, I was right. <laughs> Shepherd, why, boy, how is it? Clown, I would, I would you did, but see how it chafes, how it rages, how it takes us shore, but that's not the point. Oh, the mis most piteous cry of the poor souls, sometimes see him and not see him. Now, ship borne to the moon and the main mast, and then on swallow the yeast and broth of you, just a cork into a hog's head, and then to land so as to see how the bear tore out the shoulder bone, how he cried for, to me for help, and said his name was Antagonist, a nobleman. But to make an end of the ship, to see how the sea flopped dragging it. But but how the poor souls roared and the sea mocked him, and how the poor gentleman roared and the bear mocked him, both roaring louder than the sea or weather. Shepherd, near mercy, when was, when was this boy? Clown, now, now I have not winked since I saw these sights. The men are not yet cold into water, but nor the bear hath dined in the gentleman. He's at it now. Oh, Jesus. Shepherd, would I have been by to help the old man? Clown, I would you had been by the ship's side to have helped her. Their charity would have lacked footing. Shepherd, heavy matters, heavy matters. But look me here, boy, now bless thyself. Thou meetest with the things dying, I things with newborn. Here's a sight for thee. Look thee, a bearing cloth for the squire's child. Look thee here. Take up, take up, boy. Open it, so let's see it was told me I should be rich by fairies. Is it, This is some changeling. Open it. What's that then, boy? Crown opens box. You're a maid, old man. If the sins of your fate youth are forgiven you, you'll well live. Gold! Oh, gold! Shepherd, this is very gold, boy, and twill prove so. Up with it, keep it close. Home, home, next way. We are lucky, boy, and to be so still requires nothing but secrecy. Let me my, my sheep go. Let me my sheep go. I got to do what... Okay, no, have fun. It's getting a long interview, so just, just be ready, alright? Have fun. Do-do-do. Smiles. Hmm. Shepherd, this is very gold, boy. Twist. Home, home, the next way. We are lucky, boy, and to, and be it so, will nothing requires but secrecy. Let my sheep go. Come, boy, the next way home. Clown, go in the next way with your findings. I'll go see the bear go be gone from the gentleman, and how much he hath eaten. They are never cursed, but when they are hungry, but if they are, there be any of him left, I'll bury it. Shepherd, that's a good deed. If thou mayest discern by which which is left of him or what he is, fetch me the sight of him. Clown, Mary will I, and you shall help to put him in the ground. Shepherd, tis a lucky day, boy, and we'll do good seeds on it. Hmm? A very lucky day. A very lucky day. It's a time and chorus. Ooh, there's a time and a chorus. Act 4, scene 1. That's interesting. Time. I that please some try all, both joy and terror, good and bad, that makes some bold error. Now take upon me the name of time, to use my wings and putin it not a quine, a quine. Oh, To me or my such passage, that I slide over the sixteen years and leave the growth untired of that wide gap, since it is my power to overthrow the law, and in one self born hour. Don't just. Don't. Not time, place it is. <sighs> to plan an overwhelmed custom, let it pass the same I am, or anxious order was, or what is now received. I witness to the times that brought them in. So shall I do the precious things now rain and make stale the glistening of this present, as my tale now seems to it. Your patience is long, I turn my glass and give my scene such growing as you had slept between. 
Leon says, leaping the effects of his fall on jealousy is so grieving that he shuts up himself. Imagine me, gentle spectators, that I now may be in fair Bohemia. I remember well, I mentioned a son a son of kings, which for Rizzle, I'm now named to you. For Rizzle. For Rizzle, my Dizzle is this. Oh yeah, that's a, that's the son of the Blixen's guy. And with some speed so paced to speak of pretty the now grown in grace, equals to the with the wondering. Who is a true who is a daughter? Oh, pretty the now grown in grace. Equal with the wondering. Whatever ensues I was wondering. I think that probably just means like Whatever ensues, I list not prophecy, but let time news be known to sprout forth. A shepherd's daughter, and what to do with her ears, which follows after. It's the argument of time. If this allow, if ever you have spent time with us, here now. If I never, let that, yet that time doth say, who wishes earnestly, you never may. Bum, 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 bum. So we have Perdita, who is the daughter the true daughter she's living well she's with the shepherd though and you know you have Luxinus Luxin Luxina Luxina who is the son of the five from Bohemia alright so act four scene two and of Luxinus and Camillo who are in Bohemia well except for Camilla Camilla was one of the lords of Sicilia Luxin I pray thee, good Mill, be no unfortunate, tis a sickne sickness to dying thee, anything a death to grant us. Camillo, it is fifteen years since I saw my country. Fifteen years, oh jeez. Though I have for the most part been at air abro abroad, I desire to land bones there. Besides the penny the king my master hath sent for me, who to whose saw feeling so I may come I might come to Al Ali or Ween or Ween think so, which is spur another to my departure. Luxinus, as thou lovest me, Camilla, wipe not out the rest of thy services by leaving me now. The need I have of thee, thy own goodness, hath made. Better out to have had thee than thus to want thee. Thou have made me business which none without thee can sufficiently manage. Must either stay to execute thine and thyself, or take away with thee thy services thou hast done, which I have not now considered, as much I cannot. To be more thankful thee shall be my study. And my prophet there in the heaping friendships. Of that fatal country, Celia, prithee speak no more, whose very name punishes me with the remembrance of thy, that pertinent, as thou callest him, and reconcile like my king, my brother, whose loss of his most precious queen and children are even now to be fresh lamented. Say to me, when sawest thou the prince, for others as well my son? Kings are no less unhappy, their issue not being gracious, and they are losing in them when they have proved their virtues. Camilla. Sir, it is three days since I saw the prince. What is his happy year affairs may be are me unknown, but I have missingly noted he is of late much retired from the court and is less frequent to his princely exercise than formerly that he has appeared. Plexians, I have considered so much Camilla, and with some care so far that I have eyes under my service which look upon his remoteness, from whom I have this intelligence. That he settled in the house of a most homely shepherd, a man, they say, that from very nothing and beyond the imagination of his neighbors, is grown to unspeakable estate. Camilla, I have heard, sir, of such a man, who has the daughter of most rare note. The report of her is extended more than can be thought of to be against such, from such a cottage. Pugsnes, that likewise part of my intelligence, for I fear the angle that plucks our son thither. Though so thou shalt accompany us to the place where we will, not appearing what we are, have some question with the shepherd, from whom simplicity I think not uneasy to get the cause of my, son, my son's resort to her. Prithee, be my present partner in this business, and lay aside the thoughts of Cecilia. Camilla, I willingly obey your command. Pluck sneeze, my best Camilla, we must disguise ourselves. So they're gonna go see the shepherd. Articulus, 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 articulus. What a rogue. Oh no, why a rogue? Why do we need a rogue? We're just getting to a good part, man. Come on, man, you don't need a rogue. A rogue. A rogue. A rogue. <laughs> and Jarticus sing, singing. When daffodils begin to peer with high the doxy over the dale, when thine comes 
and sweet of the year, for the red blood rains and the winter's pale. The white sheep bleaching on the hedge with thy little sweet birds, oh how they sing. Thou said my plucking tooth on edge, for a quart of ale is a dish for a king. The dark of a tear a little chants with high, with high the thrush and jay. All summer songs for me and my aunts while we tumbling in the hay. I have served Prince Florizel, and in my time roar three pile, but now I am out of service. But shall I go and mourn for that my tear? The pale moon shines by my night, and when I wander here and there, I then do most go right. If tinkers may have leave to live, and bears a so skin budget, then mine account I will give, and in the socks I vouch it. My traffic is sheets. When the kite looks built, looks to the to linen, my father named me Oedipus, who, being as I am littered under Mercury, and was likely as a supper wise, supper up of considered trifles. With dye and dry, I purchased caparison, and my revenue is cheat, silly cheat. Gallows and knocks are too powerful and high. Beating and hanging terrors me. For the life I come, I sleep out of thought. A prize, a prize! Intercom. Clown. Let me see every leaven, whether Todd's, which is the clown is the son of the shepherd, right? Let me see every te- leaven, whether Todd's, every Todd yields pound of ch- odd shilling, fifteen hundred shorn. What comes to will two? Out close aside. That's ring shells. Old. Hmm. A mine. Springe? Is that trap? Probably. Trap for probably stupid food. Hmm. Ham. Ham? Ham. Clown. I cannot do without counters. Taking out a list. Let me see. What am I to buy for our sheep shearing feast? Three pounds of sugar? Five pounds of currants? Rice? What will the sister, the sister of mine do with rice? My father hath made her mistress of the beast, and she lays on. She hath made me a four and twenty nosegays for the shearers. Three men song men, and all and very good ones. But they are not most of the main ambassadors of modern purity amongst them, and he sings songs of hornpipes. I must have saffron to color warden pies, mace. Dates none, that's out of my notes. Not make seven, a race or two, ginger. Oh, but that I may beg for pounds of prunes as may the raisins of the sun. <laughs> Atticus, uh, groveling on the ground. Oh, that I ever was I born. Clown, in the name of me. Atticus, oh, help me, help me. Pluck out the butterfly's rags and then death, death. Clown, alack, poor soul, thou hast need for more rags to lay on thee rather than have these off. Articles, oh, sir, the lowest of them them offend more than stripes I have received, which are mighty ones and millions. Clown, alas, poor man, a million beating may come to a greater matter. Articles, I am robbed, sir, and beaten my money and apparel taken from me, and these are successful things put upon me. Clown, by a horseman or a footman? Articles a footman, sweet sir, a footman. Clown, indeed he should by a footman by the garments he has left with thee. If this be a horseman's coat, it hath been very hot surface. Lend me thy hand, I'll help thee. Come, lend me thy hand. Helps Articles to stand. Articles, oh, good sir, tenderly, oh. Clown, alas, poor soul. Articles, oh, good sir, softly, good sir, I fear, sir, my soul shall play this out. Clown, how now? Can't stand. Articles, softly, dear sir, good sir, softly. Picking clown's pocket, <laughs> you have done me a terrible office. Clown, does that lack any money? I have a little money for thee. Articles, no, good sweet sir, no, I beseech you, I, sir, I have a kinsman not three, past three quarters of miles hence, unto whom I was going. I shall have money for or anything I want. Offer me no money, I pray, that kills my heart. Hm, hm, hm. Clown, what matter of fellow was that he robbed you? Articles, a fellow, sir, that I have known to go about the troll of my dames. I knew him once servant of the prince. I cannot tell, good sir, who, which of his watches it was. <laughs> but he was certainly whipped out of the court. Clown, his vice would say, he would say, there's no virtue whipped out of the court. They cherish it to make it stay there. Yet no more will abide. Articles, so as I would say, sir, I know this man well. He has been sent to Aper, that our process of a bailiff. That he compassed a motion of a prodigal son and married to Tinker's wife in the while, where my land my living lies, and having flown over many navish professions, I settled on, on the world. Some call him Articles. 
<laughs> I wonder why, clown. I upon him, prig for my life, prig. He haunts wakes, berries, and bear beatings. Articles. Very true, sir, sir, he, sir, he. That's the road that put me into his apparel. Clown, not a more cowardly rogue than in all Bohemia. If he had but looked big and spit at him, he'd have run. Articles. I must confess to you, sir, I am no fighter. I am a false of heart that way, and that he knew I warned him. Clown. How do you know? God, if see, sir, much better than I was. I can stand and walk. I will even take my leave of you and pace softly towards my kinsman. Clown, shall I bring thee all away? God, if no good face, sir, no sweet, sir. Clown, then fare thee well. I must go by spices for a sheep sharing. You should check your pockets. You should check your pockets. Really, you should check your pockets. You, you really should. You really should. Oh. Articles, prosper, you exit. Articles. Prosper you, sweet sir. Your purse is not hard enough to purchase your spice. I'll be with you at the sheep sharing too. If I make not this cheat bring out another of the shears proof sheep, let me be enrolled in my name put in the book of virtue. Sing Jog on, jog on the good pathway, and merrily hence the style of a merry heart goes all day, your sadness tires a mile on <sighs> These this guy this this guy Oh this is a long scene oof 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 this is a long scene why are you so long? So Act four scene four Enter Florizel which is the Prince of Bohemia and Perdita who is a true daughter of Cilicia Florizel These your unusual weeds to each part of you does give life. No shepherdess but Flora appearing in tables front, this your sheep sharing is as meaty as the pretty petty gods, and you on the clean aunt. Pretty to sir, my gracious lord, child, your extremes is not becomes me. O oh, pardon thy name them. Your high self the gracious mock of land. You have obscured with a swain's wearing of me, poor lowly maid. Those goddess like franked up. Without our feast, and every mess of all your abetas digested the custom, I should blush to see that you are so attired. Swim, I think, to show myself a glass. Perizel. I bust time when my good falcon made her flight across thy father's ground. Perita. Now show for, for, for your cause. To me the difference was dread. The greatness hath not been used to fear. Even now I tremble to think your father by some accident should pass this way as he did. Oh, the fates! How would he look to see his work was so noble? Finally bound up. up. Sorry. Come on, Lord. I ain't a Lord. Come on, Lord. Lord, please. Lord, please help. Oh, the face. How he would. How would he look to his, see his, noble, his work? So noble. Violently bound up. Would he? What would he say? Well, how should I in these that bowed fonts behold the sternness of his presence? For his up, apprehend nothing but duality. The gods themselves, humbling the de 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 deities of love, have taken the shapes of, breasts of beasts upon them. Jupiter became a bull of blowed ne green Neptune, a ram of bleated, and a fire robbed god of go golden Apollo, a poor humble swain. As I see now, the transformations were never for a piece of beauty ra rarer, nor in a way so chaste since my desires, nor not before mine honor, nor my lust burn harder than my faith. Perdita. Oh, but sir, your resolution cannot hold when tis opposed that as it must be. Of thy power of the king. For one of these two must be necessities, which then I will speak that you must change the purpose. Oh, my life. Oh, I, my life. Rosa. Thou, dearest Perdita, with these four thoughts I prithee thou can not the mirth of the feast, or I'll be thine, my fair, or not my father's. For I cannot be mine own, or nor anything to any, if I be not thine. To this I am most constant, though, through, though destiny say no. Be merry, gentle, strangle, strangle such thoughts as these with anything that behold you the while. Your guests are coming. Lift up your countenance as it were the day. Celebration the nuptial which we two have sworn shall come. Perdita. O Lady Fortune, stand you auspicious. Enter the old shepherd, clown, Mopsa. Mopsa? Dorcas? Mopsa? Mopsa? Dorcas? And also the book thingies and Camilla books, guys. Mopsa? Mopsa? Shepherdess? Oh, so more shepherdess. Ah, ah, ah. We have more shepherdesses. And we have the king and the Camilla. <laughs> Both disguise. 
proposal. See your guests approach. Address, you, address yourself to entertain this brightly, and then and then let the be read with mirth. Shepherd. Bye, daughter. When my old wife lived upon the stage, she was both parlor, butler, cook, both dame and servant. Welcome all, served all. Would sing her song and dance her turn. Now here at upper end of the table, now in the middle of her, on his shoulder, in his face, her face all fire with labor. I think she took quench it. She would put to each one sip. You are tired as if you are feasted on one and not. The host of the meeting, pray you bid these unknown friends as welcome. What well, is a way to make us better friends? More known, come quench your blushes to present yourself, that which you are mistress of the pet feast. Go on and bid us wel welcome your chief shearing, as you as your good flock shall prosper. Portita, to Buxness, so welcome to it is my father's will that I should take upon me the horse's ship for the day. To Camilla, you're welcome, sir. Give the, me those flowers, there, Dorcas, references for you, this rose Mary Rue. Keep these, seeming the savor with all and so long. Grace and reverence be to you both, and welcome to our sharing. Plexney Shepherdess, a fair one are you. Well, you fit our ages with flowers of winter. Cordelia, so the year growing ancient, though yet the summer's death, nor on the birth of trembling winter, the fair, fairest flowers of the season are carnations and straight gillibores, which some call nature's bastards, of that kind of rustic garden band. And I care not to give slips of them. Plexies. Wherefore, gentle maiden, do you neglect them? Bernita. For I have heard it said there is an art which is a piedness shares with great creature nature. Nature. Creating nature. Plexies. Say there be, yet nature is made better no, by no mean. But nature makes that mean. So over that art which you say adds to the nature is an art. That nature makes, see, you see, so you made, we marry a gentle assume to the wild stock, and may conceive and bark a baser kind, of a bud of nobler race. This, excuse me. This is an art, which does my nature change it rather, but the art itself is nature. Perdita, so it is. Flixings, then make your garden rich in gillibles, and do not call them bastards. Perdita, I'll, put not, I'll not put the dibble on the earth to set one slip of them. No more than what I painted, I wish would, I would wish this youth should say it were well. And only therefore desire to breed me. Here's flowers for you, hot lavender, mint, savory, marjoram, the mar marigold that goes to the bed with the sun, and with the rises weeping, he said flowers of middle summer. And I think they are given to the men of middle age. You are very welcome. Camillo, I should leave grazing where I of your flock, and only live by grazing. <laughs> Pretty to all the last. <laughs> you would be so lean that last in January it would blow you through and through. <laughs> to Florizel. Now, my fairest friend, I would, I would have, I had some flowers of spring that might become of your time of day. To shepherdesses, and yours, and yours, and where upon your virgin branches get your maiden head growing, O oh, prosper, Bina, for the flowers now that brighted, now less, Leas falls from this is gone wagon, that for those that come before a swallow dares and take the winds and march of the beauty, violets dim but sweeter than lids of Juno's eyes, or Cythria's breath. Pale primroses that die unmarried, ere they can behold, bright pulled Phoebus of strength, a melody, most inc incident to maids, bold ox lips, and the crown imperial, lilies of all kinds, and flower de luce being one. Oh, these I lack, and make your garlands of, and my sweet friend to strew them over and over. For is a what? Like a corpse! <laughs> like a corpse! Mm, yeah, yeah. Rita, no! Like a bank for love to lie and play on, like a it, or if thought to be buried, but quick in thy my arms. Come, take your flowers, methinks I play, as I have seen them do, in winds and pa pastorals. Sure this robe of mine does change my disposition. Brizzle. What you do, so better is what is done. When you speak sweet, I have, have you do it ever. When you sing, I'd have you buy and sell so. So give alms, pray so, for the ordering your affairs, sing them too. When you do dance, I wish you would but see that you might ever do nothing but that. Move still, still so, and own no other function. Each you're doing, so singular in particular, is part to count that you are doing in the pre present deeds that all your acts are queens. Perdita. Oh, Doracles, your praises are too large. That your youth and bo true blood, which peace fairly through. I do plainly give you an out, gout and, and say shepherd, with wisdom I might fear my Doracles. You wooed me the false way. Florizel. 
I think you have as little skill to fear as I have purpose to put you to it. But come or dance, I pray to your hand, my Perdita, my Perdita. So a turtle's pair that never means a pot. Perdita. I'll swear for one. Perdita and Boros will dance. Aww. Aww. Okay, this is cute. Flex me. Stick a mila. This is Stick a This is the prettiest little born lass that ever ran on the greenswood. Nothing she does or seems is max is greater than herself. Too noble for this place. Well, he tells her something that makes her blood fall the it. Good sooth, she is the queen of curds and cream. Selling to him. Hmm? Clown. Two musicians. Come on, strike up. Dorcas. Mopsa, must you be your mistress? Marry a garlic to mend the, with her, her kissing with. Mopsa. Now in good time. Clown. Not a word, a word. We stand upon our manners. Come, strike up. He who dance of shepherds and shepherdesses. Flick me. Pray, good shepherd, what fair swain is this which dances with your daughter? Shepherd. They call him Doracles, and boasts himself to have a worthy feeling. But I have... But I have it upon his own word, and I believe it. He looks like sooth. He says he loves my daughter. I think so, too. I'll never gaze the moon upon the water until st as he'll stand and read as for my daughter's eyes. And to be plain, I think there is not half a kiss to choose who loves another the best. Aww. This is so cute. <laughs> Look, please. She dances feebly. Shepherd, so she, so she does anything. Though I reported that should be silent if young doracles do light upon her, she shall bring him that which she not dreams of. Intercept. Oh, master, if you did but hear the peddler at the door, you would have never danced again at the table of a pipe, nor the bad, not know the bagpipe could not move you. He sings several tunes faster than you'll tell money. He utters them as he had eaten ballads, and all men's ears grew to these tunes. Clown. You could never come better if you shall come in. I love a ballad, but even too well, if it's delicate matter, merely sit down. Or a very pleasant thing indeed, and sung lovingly. Servant. He has songs for a man or woman of all sizes. No millionaire, no milliner, can so fit his customers with gloves. He has the prettiest songs for maids, so with baldry with the strange, with such delicate burdens of fading. Come, per jump her and thump her, and wear some stretched mouth rascal wood, as it were. Mean mischief and break a foul gap in the mat into the matter. He makes a maid to answer. Whoop, do me no harm, good man. Puts him off, slights with him with whoop, do me no harm, good man. Looks me that this is a brave fellow. Um, believe me, thou talkest of the Myra Concealer Beto. Has he any embraided wares? Scovent. He has ribbons of all colors with rainbow points more than all lawyers of Bohemia can literally handle. So they come to him with the gross singles, caddises, cambric lawn that he by sings out over as they were gods or goddesses. You would think a smock were as she angel. He so trans the sleeve hand and work that's very aunt. Found pretty bring him in, and let him approach singing. Pretty the for warn him that he uses no scurrilous words in his tunes. Yeah, very, very scurrilous, very Oof, exit servant. Clown. Yeah, these peddlers that do more than you in than they think, sir. Sister. But either I, good brother, will go about to think. And to articulate <laughs> Articulus the rogue in disguise singing. Lawn as white as driven snow, cypress black as arrows glow, and gloves as sweet as dazzling roses, masks for faces and for noses. Local crap, Hugo bracelets, necklace, sandra, perfume for ladies' chambers, golden quips and stomachers for my lads to give their dreams, pins and poking sticks of steel with maids like from head to heel. Come by me, come, come by, come by, by lads or else your lasses cry. Come by, clown. If I'm not in love with Mopsa, that should that should just take no money of me. But being in thrones I am, I will also be the bondage of some ribbons and gloves. <laughs> Mopsa, I was promised against them the beast, but they not come not too late too late now. Dorcas, he had promised you more than that, or be or there be liars. Mopsa, he has paid you all he promised. He maybe he has paid you more, which will shame you to give him again. Clown, is it no manners that among maids? Well there well, they wear their packets where they should bear their faces. Is it not milking time when you go are going to bed or kin hall or to whistle over their secrets? But you must be tittle-tattling for all our guests. Tis well aware they are asleep, they are whispering. 
Can I your tongues and not one more? <laughs> Mops up. I have done. Come, you promised me a charity face. <laughs> Wait, and the pair of three gloves. What, come. <laughs> have I not told thee how his cousin's cousin dealt by the way and lost all my money? Otipus. And indeed, they are cousins abroad. Therefore, it behooves men to be wary. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Come. Fear not, thou man. Thou shalt not lose nothing here. Articus, I hope so, sir, for I have felt me many possible to touch. Come. What is here? Ballots? Mops up. Pray now, buy some. I love a valiant print. A life for then, we are surely then, they are true. Articus, here is one of a doleful tune. How I'm sure his wife was brought to bed out of twenty money bags at a burden, how she longed to eat at Ido's head and toad's covenant. <laughs> Mops up. Is it true? Thank you. Articus, very true, but a month old. Dorcas, bless you, man, you're not sure, sure. Articus, here's the windwife's name to it, the mistress teleporter. Of five or six honest wives are present. Why should I carry lies abroad? Mops up, pray you now, buy it. Crap, come on, lay, lay by and let's see first more ballads. We'll buy the other things and on. Articus, here's another ballad of fish that appeared upon the coast of Wednesday at Borscore and before. The Wednesday four score of April forty thousand fathom above water, and sung this ballad against the hard hearts of mates. It was all she was a woman turned to a cold fish. She would not exchange flesh with that one that loved her. The ballad is very pitiful as true. Dorcas, is it true too? Thank you. Do, 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 do you, do you, do five justices' hands in it, and witnesses more than my pack will hold. Clown, lay it by to another. Articus, this is a merry ballad, but a very pretty one. Mopsa, let's have some merry ones. Rodicus, why well, is passing merry one? And goes to the tune of two maids wooing a man. There's a scarce maid westward, but she sings it. Tis a request I can tell you. Mopsa, we can both sing it. If thou be a bear of shall, shall bear, tis in three pots. Dorcas, we had a tune on it a month ago. Rodicus, I can bear my pots. You must know tis my occupation. Have I it with you? Song. Get you hence, for I must go. Articus, where did Spitz, you know? Dorcas, whither? Mopsa, oh, whither? Dorcas, whither? Is this the wither song? Is this the wither song? Is this? Oh, oh no, it's not the wither song. It's not the wither song. It's not the wither song. It's not, it's not, it's not it's, that's the song. That's the thing is wither. Wither, okay. It's like a wither song. Wait, wait, wait. Mopsa. It becomes thy host full well, thou to me secrets tell. Dorcas, me too, let me go thither. Mopsa, or oh, thou goest to the grange or mail. Dorcas, if to either shall thou still. Articus, neither. Dorcas, would neither. Articus, neither. Dorcas, thou hast sworn my love to be. Mopsa, thou hast sworn it to me. Well then, with a ghost, say with a clown. We'll have the song out and on by ourselves. And my father and my gentlemen are inside talk and will not trouble them. Come, bring away the pa pack for me after me. Wenches, I'll buy you both for both. Peddler, let's have first choice. Follow me, ghost. Hmm. Platypus. And you shall pay a well for it. Song. Will you buy any tape or any lace for your cape? My dainty duck, my dear, any silk, any thread, any toys for your head, of the newest and finest, finest wear. Come to the peddler, money is a meddler, the doth utter a man's way. And so so it. Seven to shepherd. Master, there's three cape carters, three shepherds, three nephards, three swine herds that have made themselves all men of hair. They call themselves saltiers, and they have a dance which the one should say is a gown with I. Of gambles because they say they're not it, but they themselves are of the mind. If it be not too rough for some that know little but bowling, it will please plentifully. Shepherd, away! Will none of it? <laughs> will none of it? Here has been too much homely foolery already. I know, so we wear you. Quick sneeze. You weary those that refresh us, pray. Let's see these, uh, these four, these four threes of herdsmen. Servant, one, three of them. He their own report, sir, hath danced before the king, and not the worst of the, the three, but jumps twelve and foot and half by the square. Shepherd, leave you prating, since these good men are pleased, let them come in, but quickly now. Seven, why, they stay at the door, sir. He brings in the dancers. 
Here are dance of twelve status. Here's the dance of twelve status. Lexi, it's too all separate. Oh, Father, you know more of that hereafter. Katugamilla, it's not too far gone. Tis time to part them. Be simple and tell us much. To Perusal, how now, fair shepherd? Your heart is full of something that does take your mind. Your mind is some freezing. Soon, when I was young and hand in love as you do, I was I was wont to to load my side with nuts. I would have ransacked the peddler's silken treasury and poured it with acceptance. He had let him go, and nothing mattered with him. If your last interpretation should abuse and cause this to like a love of bounty, you were straighted from the last reply, at least Omega Care, of happy holding her. Perezel, oh, so I know, she cries not so trifle as these. The gifts she looks for me are packed and locked upon my, my heart, which I have given already, but not delivered. To pity that, oh, hear my, my breath, my life. Oh, hear me breathe my life before this ancient sir, who it should seem hath sometime loved. I take thy hand, this hand, as soft as dove's down, and as white as it is, or with filpians too, or the fan snow of the bolted over the, by the northern last flies over. Flick sneeze. What pulls us? To Camilla, how pretty the young, young swain seems to wash the hand that was bare before. To Perizal. I have put you out, but to your pro protestation let me hear what you profess. Perizal. Do and be witness to it. Plexines, and this my neighbor too. Blizzle, and he and more than he and men. The earth, the heavens, and all that where I can crown the most imperial monarch. There are most worthy were I the fairest youth that ever made I swerve had force and knowledge. More than was ever man's, I would not prize them without her love. For her employ them all, commend them, and condemn them to her service or to their own perdition. Plexines, fairly if offered. Camilla, this shows a sound affection. Shepherd. But my daughters say ye like to him. But either I cannot speak. So well, nothing so well, no, nor means better. By the pattern of mine own thoughts, I'll cut off the purity of his. Shepherd, take hands a bargain, and friends, no known, ye shall bear witness to it. I give my daughter to him, and will make her portion equal to his. Perizal, oh, that must be the, the virtue of your daughter. One being dead, I shall have more than ye can dream of yet. Excuse me. Enough then for your wonder, but come on, contract us for these witnesses. Shepherd, come on, come your hand, and your daughters, and daughter yours. Plexus, soft swain and wild beseech you, have you a father? Plexus, I have, but what of him? Plexus, knows he of this? Plexus, he neither no does nor shall. Plexus, methinks a father is as nuptial as a son, a guest that becomes of the table. Pray you once more, is not your father grown capable of reasonable affairs? Is he not stupid with age and altering realms? Can he speak? Here, no other man for man, dispute his own estate. Lies be not be red, bedrid, and again does nothing but what is his deed being childish? Grizzle, no good sir, he had his health and ampler of strength indeed, then most half of his age. Plexus, by my white beard, you offer him, if this be so, a wrong, something unviable. Reason, my son, should choose himself a wife, but as good a reason as father, who hold whose joy is nothing else, but fair posterity, should hold some counsel in such a business. Perisla, I yield all this, but for some other reason, my grave, sir, which tis not fit to you know, I have not acquainted my father with this business. Flexing, let him know it. Perisla, he shall not. <laughs> Flexing, prithee, let him. Perisla, well, he must not. <laughs> Shepherd, let him, my son. <laughs> he shall not need. He shall not need to grieve at knowing of thy choice. Perizal, come, come, he must not. Make mark our contract. Oh jeez. <laughs> Looks at these. Remove me the disguise. Mark your divorce, young sir, whom son I dare not call. Thou art too base to be acknowledged, thou scepter's hair that thus affects us. Did she hook? Thou, old traitor, I am sorry, but that uh, by hanging thee I can but shorten thy life one week. And thou, fresh piece of excellence, which crap, whom a force must know the royal fool of cups with shepherd. Oh, my heart! Look, I have, I'll have thy beauty scratched with bears, rares, and made more homely than to sate. To Flores, oh, for thee, if boy, that I may ever know thou dost but sigh, that thou no more shalt never see this knack, and as never, I mean now, ne shalt. We will bow and bear thee from accession, not hold thee of our blood, nor our kin, far from the Kelly and off. Mark thou my words, follow us to the court. To old shepherd, thou, sure of this was time, for through though full displeasure, yet we feel we free, free thee from dead blow of it. To Redita, and you enchantment worthy of her and of her husband. Yeah, him too. 
that makes himself unfor honor he, he, there and unworthy thee. If ever hence thou thou for owl, these royal latches to his entrance open, or hoop his body more than embraces, I will devise a death as cruel for thee as thou attended to it. Oh shoot! Hmm, hmm. Prettier, even here undone. I was not much afeard, nor for once or twice I was but to speak and tell him plainly that self's man sun shines upon his court, hides not his visage from a cottage, but looks unlike. It's really so will please you, sir, be gone. I told you what would come of this. Beseech you of your own stays and care. This Jeremiah being now awake, I'll clean in no inch father, but melt my ears and weep. Camilla, why, how now, father? Speak here, thou diest. Separate, I cannot speak, nor think, nor dare to think to know which I know. To Philip's oath, oh, sir, you have undone a man for score three. That, the thought of his grave and quiet, yeah, to die upon the bed my father died. Eighty-three years of age, jeez! To die upon the bed my father died, to lie close by his honest bones, but now some hangman must put to my shroud to play me, with no priest shelves in the dust. To Bredita, oh, cursed wretch that knew that, that this was the prince of Wittis' adventure, to mingle faith with him. Undone! Undone! If I might die within this hour, I have lived to die where I desire. Exit. Oh, jeez. The Lord is also Camilla. Why you look upon so upon me? I am but sorry, not a fear delayed, but nothing altered. When I was, I am more straining of the pucking back of not following my leash unwillingly. Camilla. Gracious my lord, you will you know your father's temper at this time he will allow no speech. When I do guess you do not purpose to him, as hard, and as hardly will he endure your sight as yet, I fear, then till the fury of sight high is settled, come not before him. For as well, I'll not purpose it. I think Camilla I think Camilla? So he didn't know it was Camilla <laughs> Camilla, removing disguise, even he, my lord. Perdita. How often have I told you to would be thus? How often did I say my dignity would last, but twill nor know? Florizel, I cannot fail but by the violation I have faith. And then let nature crush sides of the together and maw the seeds within. Lift up by looks for the succession of my wife, me and father. I am heir to my affection. Camilla, be advised. Florizel, I am, and by a fancy, if my reason were will thereto be obedient, I have reason. If not my senses, better pleased with my madness, do bid it welcome. Camilla, that is desperate, sir. Well, it's so call it, but it does fulfill my vow. I needs must think it honesty. Camilla. Not for Bohemia, nor for the pomp that may that there be gleaned. While the sun sees, or is close to earth's wombs, the profound seas hide, or the unknown fathoms, will I break my oath to my, this my fair beloved. Therefore, I pray you, as he have ever been my father's honored friend, when he shall miss me. As in faith I may not see him any more, cast your good counsel upon his passion. Let myself and fortune tug to fortune tug for the time to come. This may this you may know and so deliver. I am put to sea with her who I hear and cannot hold on shore, and will opportune to her, her need. I have a vessel rides fast by, but not prepared for the design. What course I mean to hold shall not be, nothing benefit to your knowledge, nor concern me as a reporting. Camilla, oh my lord, I would your spirit were easier to for advice or stronger for your need. Florizel, hark, Perdita. To Camilla, I'll hear you by and by. Florizel and Perdita walk together. Camilla, he's irremovable, resolved for a flight. Now I, I were I happy if his going I could frame so my turn, save him from danger, do love him love and honor, purchase sight again of his Celia and that unhappy king, my master, whom I th so much thirst to see. Florizel. Says Ford. Now, good Camilla, I am so fraught with Curtis' business that I leave out ceremony. Camilla, so I think you have put my poor services in love that I have borne your father. Fuzzle, very nobly, you have you deserved. This my, it is my father's music to speak of your deeds, not little of his care to have them recompensed as thought on. Camilla, well, my lord, if you, you may please to think I love the king and through him one nearest to him, which is gracious itself. Embrace by my direction, if you more ponderous and solid project may suffer alteration. On my honor, I'll point you where you shall have such receiving, and shall become your highness, where you may enjoy your mistress, and from whom I see there is no junction to be made up, but by. As heaven's for pen, you ruin, your ruin. Marry her, and with her best endeavors in your absence, a discontenting father, strive to qualify and bring him up to like you. Perusal. How, Camillo? May this almost miracle be done that I may call thee something more than a man, and after that trust to thee. Camilla, have you thought on a, a place where to you'll go? 
Rosal Knight any yet, but as uh, on, on that, on guilty is guilty. So what we wildly do, so we profess ourselves to these slaves and chance and flies of every wind that blows. Kill. Then list to me, this follows if you will not change your purpose, but undergo this fight, make for Cecilia, and then present yourself as your and your fair princess, so for so I see she must seat thee for notice. She shall be inhabited as it is becomes be the pardon of your bed. Methinks I see Leontes opening with his free arms weeping. He is welcome forth, and has the there son forgiveness. As for with father's persons, kisses the hands of your fresh princes over the hmm. over and over divides him twixt his unkindness and his kindness. The one that he tries to hell and bids the other grow faster than thought of time. Worthy Camilla, what color of my visitation shall I hold up before him? Camilla, sent by the king your father to greet him and give him comforts. Sir, the manner of your bearing towards him with what you are, as you for your father shall deliver, things know betwixt us three. I'll write you down which shall point to you forth at every city what you may say, and that he shall not perceive, but that you, sh you had your father's bosom there and speak his very heart. Rosal, I am bound to you. There is some sadness. Camilla, of course, more, more promising than a wild vacation of yourselves to path waters and dream shores, most certain to misery enough to no hope to help you. But as you shake off to one to the, take another, nothing so certain as your angers. Who do their best office if they can but say you where that you'll be loath to be? Besides, you know, prosperity is the very bond of love, whose fresh complexion of those brought together of flesh and altars. Perdita, one of these is true. I think affliction may subdue the cheek, but not mistake the mind. Well, yeah, say so. There shall not be your father's house these seven years be born or such. Rosal, my good Camilla, Camilla, she's a forward of a breeding, and as she is a but. Camilla, I cannot say tis pity that she likes instructions, for she is seems the mistress to much that teach. Perdita, your pardon, sir, for this I bless you, thanks. Rosal, my pretty is Perdita, oh, but, oh, the ones we stand upon. Camilla, the preserve of my father, now of me, the medicine of our house, how shall we do? We are not furnished like Bohemia's son, nor shall appear in Cecilia. Camilla, my lord, if you know this, I I think you know my fortunes do all lie there. I shall be so my care to have you royally appointed, as if the scene you play were mine. What's it, sir, that if you, you may know, you shall not want one word? Camilla, before his own Padilla talk together, and to Adipus. Adipus, ha! <laughs> What a fool honesty is, and trust with sworn brother and a very simple gentleman. I have sold all my trumpery, a counterfeit stone, and a ripping glass, pomander, pomander, brooch, table book, ballad, knife, cape, glove, shoe tie, bracelet, horn ring to keep my packing from fasting. They throng who should buy first, and as my drink it had been hallowed and brought a benediction to the biter, which by means I saw whose person was best in picture, and why I saw it my good use to remember. My clown, who wants but something to be reasonable, a man grew so in love with the wench's song that he should not turn his petty ooze. Still, he had but both tune and words, which so drew the rest of the herd to me that all their other senses suck in ears. You might have pinched it in it. pocket. It was senseless, twas nothing but mere gale of the cod piece of puss. I would have filed the keys off the hung and chains, no hearing, no feeling, but in my sir's song, and am I nothing of it. So that in this time of lethargy I picked and cut most of the festival purses, and had not the most old man come in with hub bub against his daughter and his king's son, and scared my crop shelf and shop, uh, had I not left the purse alive in the whole army. <laughs> Camilla boys on Pudita to come forward. Camilla to Perusal and Pudita. Neighbor, my letters by this means, being there so soon as you arrive, shall clear that out. This one. And thus it you'll procure from King Leontes. Camilla, shall satisfy your father. Perdita, happy be you! All that you speak shows bear. Camilla, no, see, Antipas. Who will be here? We'll make you an instrument of this. Oh, mate, nothing else. Give us a side. Antipas, a side. If they have overheard me now. Why, hanging! Camilla, how now, good fellow? What shakest thou? So, do not, man. There's no harm indeed intended to thee. Articles, I am a poor fellow, sir. Are you, though? Come on. Why, be so silly. Here's nobody who will steal from thee. Yet from outside thy poverty, we must take an exchange. Therefore, we'll disgrace thee in instantly. Thou must think that there's necessity in it. And change garments with the gentleman. Though the penny worth on his side be the worst, yet hold thee there's some boot. Here's some money. Articles, I am a poor fellow, sir. 
Besides, I know you well. <laughs> Come on, a name, pretty dispatch. The gentleman is half late already. Articles, are you an artist, sir? Besides, I'll, miss, I'll smell trick on it. Where is the dispatch? I prithee. Request. Indeed, I have had earnest, but I cannot with conscience take it. Camilla, unbuckle, unbuckle. First, the other class is like, exchange both. Fortune, mistress, all my prophecy, come, come see. You must retire yourself into some convert, covert. Take your sweetheart's hat and pluck it over the brow, your brow as much as your face. As much as you, and as you can, it's like in the truth of your own seeming that you may, what I do is hear the eyes o over to ship forward your aunt. Get undescribed. But either I see the place so lies that I must bear pot. Camilla, no remedy. To Florizel, have you done it there? Florizel, I show, shall I now meet my father? She would not call me son. Camilla, nay, you shall have no hat. Giving hat to Perdita. Come, lady, farewell, my friend. Articles, adieu, sir. Florizel, oh, Perdita, what have we plain forgot? For you would. The two walk together. Camilla, what shall, why do next shall it be to the king of his escape, and whether you, they are bound? Where may hope I sh as I shall so prevail to force him after, in whose company I shall review Cecilia, for whose side I have a woman song. I have a woman song. Oh, you have a woman there. Oh, you have a woman song. Oh, that doesn't mean you have a woman song. For ah. fortune speed us. Thus we set on, Camillo, to the seaside. Camillo, the swifter speed, the better. Exit all those people. Out of left. I understand the business. I hear it. To have an open ear, quick eye, and a nimble hand is necessary for a cut purse. A good no nose is requisite also to smell out the work of the other senses. I see it is time that the unjust man doth drive with an exchange that has been without boot. What a boot is here with this exchange? Sure the gods do this in the year connive us, and we may do anything in extempore. The prince himself is about a piece of inquiry, stealing away from his father with the cog at his heels, if I thought there were a piece of honesty to acquaint with the king all, I would not do it. I ho I hold it more knavery to conceal it, and there, and I am constant hey, my friends. I will say hi. Do you love us? Yes. I don't. I do. Not a stupid computer. You're alone. I don't mean. I'll be right back, guys. <sighs>
Okay, I am back. Okay, Enderclan Old Shepherd carrying a bundle and box. Oh, oh, we're still reading this one. Excuse me. Without a boot, what a boot is it here within this exchange? Show sure the gods is here can deny us, and if we may do the same thing to extempore. The prince himself is about a piece of iniquity, stealing away from his father with his clog at his heels. If I thought it were a piece of honesty to acquaint the king of all, I would not do it. I hold through no knavery to conceal it, and therein I am constant to my person. Here a clown and old shepherd are carrying out. Here enter clown and old shepherd, carrying a bundle in the box. Aside, aside, here's more after the half brain. Poor half brain every lane's end. Have you shot short attention hanging yields a careful man's work? Clown, see, see what man you are now. There's no other way but tell but to tell the king he, she's a changeling, and none of your flesh and blood. Shepherd, nay, but hear me. Clown, nay, but hear me. Shepherd, go to then. Clown, she being none of your flesh and blood, and your flesh and blood hath not offended the king, and so your flesh and blood is not to be punished by him. Show those things you have found about her, those secret things. All that she has with her, this being done. Let the law go whistle, I warrant you. Shepherd, I will tell the king all, every word, ye and the son of pranks too. Who I may say is no honest man, neither is his father to his father nor to me, to go about make me the king's brother in law. Clown, indeed, brother in law is a father of all you could have been to him, and then your blood would have been dear, dearer by I know how much an ounce. Of course, aside, very wisely, puppies. <laughs> Shepherd, well, let us go to the king. There is that in the bottle that will make him scratch his beard. Articles said, I know not what independence complaints made to the blood of my master. Clown, pray prepare to leave, be he be at peace. Palace. Articles aside, though I am not uh, naturally honest, I am so sound as no chance. Let me pocket my petal as it's Moving false beard. So, Clown, Shepherd, how now, verse 6, whither are you bound? Shepherd, to the palace. To the palace, sir, and you like your worship. Of course, your affairs there. With what? What? With whom? The condition of that bottle. The place of your dwelling. Your names. Your ages. Of what having, breeding, of anything is ready to be known and discover. No, clown. We are but plain fellows, sir. Of course, a lie. You are rough and hairy. Let me have no lying. It becomes honor but tradesmen, and they are oft give us soldiers to lie. But we pay, pray them for it. They were stamped with coin. Not seven seal, therefore they do not give us a lie. Clown, your worship had like to given us. One of you had not taken yourself with the tan manner. Shepherd, are you the courtier? I am like it, sir. Articles, whether it is me, like me or no, I am a courtier. A courtier. See is that no, thou not the heir of courts and his holdings. Hath not my gaze in the measure of thy court. Receive thou thy nose or cold odor from me? Reflect thy not on the basin's quarter of time. Thinkest thou if that insinuate to toes from thee thy business? I am therefore no courtier. I am a courtier cafe pay. And one that will either push or on or pluck back thy business, sir, whereupon I command thee to open thy affair. Shepherd, my business, sir, is to the king. Articles, what advocate hast thou to him? Shepherd, I know not, and like you. But an advocate is the court's word for peasant. Say you have none. Shepherd, none, sir, I have no peasant. Hmm? Or hen. Articles, how blessed are we that know some that are not so then? Yet nature might have made me as these are. Therefore, I will not say. Clown, this cannot be but a great courtier. Shepherd, his garments are rich, but he wears them not, not handsomely. <laughs> Clown, he seems not no, to be more noble than, than being fantastical. Great man, I won't, I know by picking out the teeth. Articles, the bottles there. What is the bottles? What is that for a box? Shepherd, sir, there lies such diggers in this bottle and the box which none must, none must know but the king, and which he shall know within this hour. I may come to the speech of him. Articles, age, thou hast lost thy labor. Shepherd, why, sir? Articles, his king of the palace. He's gone aboard a new ship, the purge melancholy, and the heir himself. For if thou beest capable of things serious, thou must know the king is full of grief. Shepherd, so to said, sir, that's about a son that should have married a shepherd's daughter. Articles, if that shepherd be not at hand fast and fly, the curse shall have, the torches have, she shall let heal, the break of the back man, back of a man, the heart of the monster. Crown, think ye so, sir. Articles, no tea alone that shall suffer that wit can make heavy and vengeance bitter, but those that are German, germane to him, though removed those fifty times, shall all come under the hangman, which, though it be great pity, yet it is necessary. A sheep and sheep old, an old sheep's whistling road, a ram tendered offer that Teva's daughter come into grace. Some say he shall be sown, but said death to soft for him, I say. Say I, 
Draw all th thrown into a sheet coat. All debts are too few. The shop is too easy. Clown. Has the has the old man ever a son? So do you hear like ain't like his sir? Articles. He has a son, but who shall be played alive and not anoint it over with honey, set on the heads whilst nuts, and stand till he be three quarters of them dread dead, then they're covered again with the aquativity of some other hot infusion. Then raw as he is, and proudest pay per gasation, proclaimed shall he be set against a brick wall, the sun looking with a south word eye upon him, where he is to behold with flies born to death. But what we talk of these traitorously rascals whose miseries are to be smiled at, their offense has been so capital. Tell me, where you seem to be honest for men, what you have the king. Being something gently considered, I'll bring you where he is aboard. Tending your persons to his presence, whisper him to your behalf, and if it be the man besides the king to effect your suits, he is the man to do it. Clown to shepherd. He seems to be a great authority. Close to him, with him, give him gold, and those, and though an already he is stubborn bear, yet he is oft led by the nose which hold. Show the entire post to the outside of his hand, and no more do. Remember stoned and flamed alive. <laughs> shepherd. And please you should try to take the business of us. Here's that gold I have. I'll make it as much more, and leave this young man to, in pawn to so bring it to you. Articles. After I've done what I promised. Shepherd. Aye, sir. Articles. Well, give me the moiety. To the clown. Are you a party in this business? Clown. In some sort, sir. But though my case be a pitiful one, I hope I shall not be played out of it. Articles. Oh, that's the case. I shall put son. Hang him. He'll be made an example. C clown. Comfort. C comfort. To the shepherd. We must do the king and show our strange sights. He must know tis not about your daughter or my sister. We are your else. Sir, I will give you as much as this old man does when what business is performed. And remain as he says, your pawn to be brought to you. Articles. I will trust you. Walk before the old seaside. Go on right hand. I will but look upon the hedge and follow you. Clown. We are best blessed in that I say, even blessed. Shepherd, let's before as he bids us. He was right with us good. I think clown and shepherd. <laughs> Articles. If I had a mind to be honest, I see fortune would not suffer me. She draws booties in my mouth. I am courted now with a double occasion. Gold and mean to means to do the prince my master good, which he knows not. Now how may you turn back to my advancement? I will bring these two moles, these blind ones, aboard him. If you think of it to show them again, and that complaints they have to the king concerns him nothing, then I'll call you rogue for being so far officious. Who I am proof against the title that more shames else belongs to it. To him will I present them. There may be matter of it. I wonder if there's like many ways to cut this cut each play and that's why they're so long, because even if you've seen the play one time, you're able to come see it again and get clean over. Huh, that's interesting not to. Act five, scene one. Enter Leontes, Clemenines. Clemenines? Clemenines. Leontes is the king of Sicilia. Clemenines. Clemenines? 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 Who, who be you? Clemenines. Clemenines. Oh, you're another lawyer, aren't you? Right? Yeah. Dion and, yeah. Kalina, who was the wife to Antagonist. <laughs> Clear mine. Sir, you have done nothing, have performed the saints like sorrow. No fault could you make which you have not redeemed, indeed paid down. More penance than done trespass. At last, do as the heavens have done, forget your evil, with them forgive yourself. Now, just whilst I remember her and her virtues, I cannot forget. My blemishes in them, and so still so think of wrong I did myself, which are so much that they're airless and hath made my kingdom and destroy the sweet sweetest companions that ever man bred his hopes of out of. True? Plainer. Too true, my lord. If one by one you wedded all the world from all the that all took something good to make a perfect woman, she you ki she you killed would be unparalleled. Montes. I think so. Killed. She I killed. I did so, but thou strikest me sorely to say I did. It is bittered upon thy tongue and of my thoughts. Now, good, go. Now, good, now. So, say so, but seldom. Clemens. Now, oh, good lady. You have, you might have spoken a thousand things I would have done. Time, more benefit and grace, your kindness better. Polina. You are one of those who would have him wed again. <laughs> Dion. If you would not so, you pity out the state of remembrance of his most sovereign name. Consider a tight little 
With that dangerous and its highest spell of the issue may drop upon his kingdom, and devour the uncertain with bronze. What we were more holy than to rejoice upon our king's queen as well? What holier than the world is repair for present comfort for the richer good to bless the bed of tragedy again with a sweet fellow to it? Belina, there is none worthy respecting the heart that's gone. Besides, the gods will have fulfilled their secret purposes, for that is not divine. Apollo said, Is not tenor of an oracle that King Leontes shall not have an heir, till his child thus shall be found? Which taught that it shall is all a monstrous to humane reason that as my antagonist to break his grave, and come to me again, come again to me, who on my life did perish with infants. Seize your counsel, my lord, should to, should to the heavens be, to be the contrary. Oppose against their wills. To the king, care not for the issue, the crown will find an heir. Great Alexander left to his to his to the wilderness, so his successor was like to the best. Without his good Polina, who has memory of Hermione, I know in my honor, oh, that I ever had spared me to thy counsel. Then, even now, I might have looked upon my queen's full eyes, have taken treasure from her lips, Polina, and left them more rich than what they had yielded. Leontis, thou speakest truth, no more such wives, therefore no wife. One worse and better use would, would make a saint's spirit again poses her corpse, and on the stage where uh, we were offenders now appear so vex, and begin, why to me? Polina, had she such power, she had just cause. Now tis she had and wouldn't sense me to murder and her were married. Paulina, I should so, were I the ghost that walked, I bid you mock her eye, and tell me for, for what dual part it is. You chose her. That shriek then even your ears would shift drift if you hear me, and the words that followed should be remember mine. Now tis Sauce, sauce, and all eyes that all stead coals, you had thou no wife, I'll have no wife, Paulina. Paulina, while wow, will you swear never to marry but my by my free leave? Now just never, Polina, so bless my spirit. Polina, then, good, my lord. Bear witness to his oath. Polina minds, you tempt him over much. Polina, unless another like Hermione has in her picture, front his eye. Polina minds, good madam, I have done. Polina, yet if my lord will marry, if you will, sir, no remedy but you will give me the office to choose you queen. She shall not be so young as was your former, but she shall be such as walked your first queen's ghost. It should take joy to see her in your arms. Excuse me. Now, just my true Polina, we shall not marry till thou divest us. Hmm. Polina. That shall be when your queen begins breath till nev never till then. Enter a gentleman. One gentleman. Gentleman. One that gives out himself Prince Horror's own son of Prolexines, for this princess, she the bears I have yet to be held, desires access to your high presence. Now, just. What's with him? He comes out like his father's greatness, his approach, so out of circumstance, sudden, though this is out of visitation framed by force, by need of accent. What train? Gentleman one, but few, and those are mean. Lantis, his prince say you with him? Gentleman one, I, the most peerless piece of earth, I think, that ere the sun shone bright on. Plena, O oh, Hermione, as at every present time doth boast itself at a pet of a better gone, so must thy grave give way to what's he now. Two servants, sir. You yourself have said, and so writ so, but your writing now is colder than that beam. She had not been, nor was she not equal, thus your verse flowed with her beauty once. Tis shrewdly ebbed, but say as you've seen it better. Gentleman one, pardon, madam, the one I have almost forgot your pardon, the other would she has obtained your eye, will uh, have your tongue too. This is a creature, would she begin a sect, might quench the zeal of all professors else, make pro proselytes of the who she but bid follow. Plena, how? Not woman? Gentleman one, woman will love her that she is woman, more worth than any man. Man that she is the rarest of all women. Now just go colonize yourself, assisted with your honored friends, bring them to our embracement. Still tis strange he thus should steal upon us. Exit Clementine, Clementines with others. Paulina, had our prince, jewel of children, seen his hour, he had paired well with the sword. There was not a full m month between their births. Dantes, for thee no more cease. Thou knowest he dies to me again when talked of. Sure, when I shall see this gentleman, thy speeches will bring me to consider that which much may enforce me with reason. They are, they are come, they are come. Enter Perizal, Perdita, Clementines, Clementines, and others. Your mother was true of wedlock, prince, for she did print your royal father off, conceiving you. 
For I but twenty one, your father image is so hating you. His very air that I should call your brother as I did him and speak of something wildly, but as a former four, most dearly welcome in your fair princess goddess, so oh, alas. I had lost a couple that twixt heaven and earth that might thus have stood of begotting wonder, as your gracious couple do, and that I lost my all my own folly, the society and my amity to of your own brave father, whom, though very misery, I desire my life once more to upon him. Frizzle. By his command, I have, I have here have I here touched Cecilia, and from him to give you all greetings that a king and a friend can send his brother, but if, and but infirmity, which waits upon warm times, hath something seized his wits, wished ability. Yet himself, the lands and waters fix you throne, and his measure to look upon you, whom he loves. He bade me say so, more than all scepters and those that bear them living. Dantes. O oh, my brother, good gentleman, the wrongs I have done thee, sir, sir, afresh within me, and these five officers, so rarely kind as the interpreters of my behind hand slackness, welcome hither as a spring to the earth, and he hath too exposed his paragons to the people usage of, a gen of at least gen ungentle, of the dreadful Neptune to greet a man not worth her pains, much less than adventure of person. Verzal, good my lord, she came from Libya. Plantus, where the warlike smallest and noble honor lord is feared and loved? most royal sir from thence from him whose daughter whose tears proclaimed his parting with her thence a prosperous so south wind friendly we have crossed to execute the charge my father gave me for visiting your highness with my best train i have from your sicilian dis shore dismissed who for bohemia been to signify not only my success in libya sir but my arrival and my wife's in safety here where we are Nantes. The blessed gods purge all affection from my air whilst you do climate here. You have, holy father, a graceful gentleman against whose person so sacred as it is, I have done sin, for which heaven's taking angry notes have left me use issueless. And your father's blessed and your of heaven from heaven merited. With you worthy his goodness, what might I have been my I have been, and a daughter now have looked on, such goodly things as you. Lord, and your Lord, Lord. Most noble sir, that I which I will credit, shall report will bear no credit, would not prove so nigh. Please you, sir, great sir, for he may have read suit from himself by me, desires you attach his son, who, his dignity is the duty both cast off, fled from his father, from his hopes, and with a shepherd's daughter. Notice. Where is Bohemia? Speak! Lord, here in your city, I now came from him. I speak amazedly, as it becomes my marvel and message, to your court while he was hastening. In, ch in its chase, it seems, of his fair couple, meets he, he on the way, the father of a seeming lady and her brother, had both his con country quitted with the young prince. For as well, Camilla has betrayed me, whose honor and whose honesty till now endured all weathers. Lord, may it suit so to his charge, he is with the king, your father. Now tis who? Camilla? Lord, Camillo, sir, I speak with him, who now has these four men in question. Never I saw wretches so quick, they kneel, they kiss the earth, will swear themselves as often as they speak. Bohemia stops his ears, and threatens him with their best deaths and deaths. Pretty the Oh, my poor father, the heavens set spies upon us, who will not have our contract celebrated. Yantus, you are married. Florizel, we are not, sir, nor are we like to be. The stars, I see, will kiss the valleys first, the odds for high and low likes. Not just my lord, is this thought of a king? Verizel, she is when once she is my wife. <laughs> now tis that once I see by your good father's speed will come on very slowly. I'm sorry, most sorry you have broken from his liking, where you were tied in duty, and I'm sorry your choice is not so rich and worth his beauty, that you might well enjoy her. Verizel, dear, look up, though fortune visible an enemy should chase for a father, thou no jot. Hath she to change our loves? Beseech you, sir, remember since you owe no more time than I do now, with thoughts and affections set forth mine advocates. At your request, my father will grant precious things as trifles. Nantes. Will you do so, I beg your precious mistress, that she counts by a trifle. Plain enough. So, my liege, your eye hath too much in it. Not a, mo not a month before your queen died, she was more to with such gazes than what you look on now. Nantes. I thought of her. Even these looks are made. To Florizel. But your petition is yet unanswered. I will to your father, your honor not overthrown by your desires. I am friend to them and you. Upon your errand, I will, I now go toward him. Therefore follow me, and mark what way, way I make. Come, good my lord. Oh. 
Hmm. We're getting closer to the end, guys. We're getting closer. We're almost there. Enter Articlus and gentlemen. Articlus. Beseech you so, were you present in this relation? First gentleman. Gentleman first. Gentleman first. Gentleman. Hmm. Articlus is also the rogue. Still. First gentleman. I was at, by the opening of bottle. Heard the old shepherd deliver the manor how he found this. Whereupon, after a little amazement, we were all commanded out of the chamber. Only this, we thought, I heard the shepherd say he found the child. Articlus. I would most probably know the issue. Of it. Just sure, gentlemen, I make a broken delivery of the business, but changes I perceived in King and Miller were very noted admiration. They seemed almost sawing on one another to tear, tear the gaze of their eyes. Stay, to stay fixed, please. I, I just want you fixed. There was a speech in the dumbness, language in the very gesture. It looked as they had heard the world round some of one but joyed. A noble passion of wonder appeared in them, but the wisest beholder that knew no more but seeing could not say its importance was joy or sorrow. But in the extremity of it of the one it must needs be. Enter now, gentlemen, Gregorio. Here comes the gentleman that happily knows more. The news, Gregorio. Gentlemen too. Nothing but bonfires or oracles fulfilled. The king's order is found. Such a deal of wonders broken out within the tower that the ballad makers cannot be able to express it. And to now, gentlemen, here comes Lady Pelina's steward. He can deliver you more. How goes it, now, sir? The blues which truth so like an old tale. Very, the verity of it is strong suspicion. Has the king found his heir? Gentlemen, very. Most true. If ever truth were pregnant in the circumstance, that which you'll hear, you'll swear, you'll see. There is such unity in the proofs. The mantle of Queen Hermione's jewel about the neck of it. The letters of Antigonus found with it, which they know the character, the majesty of this creature, and the resemblance of the mother, the affection and nobleness which nature shows in the love of breeding. Excuse me. Many other evidences proclaim with her with all certainty to be the king's daughter. Did you see did you see the meeting of the two kings? Gentleman two. No? Gentleman three. Then he had lost the sight which has to be seen, cannot spoken of. There might have been but have held one joy crowned another, and so in such a manner that same sorrow would take whip to take leave on them for a joy and by the tears. There's casting up of the eyes, holding of the hands with countenance of such distraction that they would be known garments, not by favour. Our king being ready to leave out himself for joy of his bound daughter, I said that joy were now become a lost cries. Oh thy mother, thy mother, did ask Bohemia forgiveness. Then embraces his son in law, and again worries his daughter with clipping her now he takes the old shepherd, which said stand by as like a weather beaten bitten conduit of many kings' reigns. I had never heard such another encounter which lands report to follow it, but undoes undoes prescription to do it. Gentlemen too. What pray you became an antagonist that carried hence child? Gentleman three. Like an old stale, tall tale still, which will have matter to rehearse, the credit be asleep and an ear open, he was torn to pieces with a bear. This avouches the shepherd's son, who was not only his innocence, which seems just to justify him, but a handkerchief and rings his hat in the Pelina's nose. Christian one. What became of his block and his followers? Gentleman three. Record of the same instant of the master's death, and the view of the shepherd and all instruments, which aided to explore the child, were even lo then lost when it was found. But oh, the noble commentat that twixt joy and sorrow was fallen Polina. She had one eye declined for the loss of her husband, and one other elevated for the oracle that was fulfilled. She lifted it to the princess from the earth, and so locks her in embracing, as if she would pin her to her heart, that she might know what more in danger be losing. He doesn't. First gentleman, the dignity of his act was worth the audience of kings and princes and forth by such as have acted. Gentleman three, one of the prettiest touches of all, and that which angled of mine eyes, caught the water, and though not a fish, but the alteration of the king's death, with the manner how she came to it, bravely confessed and lamented to the king how attractiveness and wounded his daughter, till from one sign of the dollar to another she did within la within the last. I would fain say, plead tears, for I am sure her my heart wept blood. Who was most probable that I changed color? Some swooned, all sorrowed. If all the world could have seen it, the woe would have been universal. First gentleman. Are they returned to the court? Gentlemen. Three. No, the princess hearing of mother's statue, it is the keeping of the Paulina, a piece many years doing, and now newly reformed by the rare Italian master, Giulio Romano, who, had he himself an attorney and could breathe in the presence of his work, would beguile the nature of his custom, so perfectly here is her ape. He is so near to Hermione, hath done Hermione, that he 
that they say one would speak to her and Santa hoped to answer. Thither the others all greeted in its affection, they are gone, and they are intent to sup. Gentlemen, too. I thought she had some greater, great manner, batter there in her hand, for she hath privately twice or thrice a day ever since. Why is everyone calling me? Why is everyone calling me? No one ever calls me. And now everyone's calling me. Okay, I'm back. Everyone's calling me today. Look, what someone else is gonna call? Watch, watch, watch. It's gonna be the. It's gonna be towards the end. It's like someone's gonna call. It's like. <gasps> okay. She said to a gentleman, "I thought she had some great matter with there in her hand, for she had privately twice or thrice a day ever the death of Hermione. This is the remove house. Shall we thither with our company, please rejoicing?" Gentleman, first gentleman. Who be then to benefit that? For every wink of an eye and every grace we born, our absence make undru makes us undrafty to our knowledge. Let's along, excellent gentlemen. Articles. Now, had I not dashed my full of life within me, I would preferent drop on my head. I found an old man and the son of the prince, told him I had heard them talk of Fardel, and now I know not what, but he and the time of bond of the shepherd's daughter, so, excuse me, so he took her to be. Who began to be much seasick and himself a little better, extremity of the weather continuing, this mysterious man discovered. But tis all one to me, for I had been the finder of all the secrets, and I would not have been relished among the uh, other discrets. And to shepherd and clown, ornately dressed. Here comes those I have done good to against my will, and already appearing in blossoms of fortune. Hm? Shepherd. Come, boy, I, pa I am past more children, but my son, since ours, will all be gently born. Gentlemen born. Aww. This new bound nobility. Crown to Articus. You are well met, sir. You denied to fight with me at this other day because I was no gentleman born. See these clothes. Say you say you see the nods and think me still no gentleman born. You will that say these robes are not gentlemen born. Give me to the lie do, and try whatever I am not now or gentleman born. Articus. I know you are now, sir, a gentleman born. Articus. <laughs> Crown. I and have been so at any time these four hours. Shepherd, and so have I, boy. <laughs> Cloud, so you yeah. have! But I was gentleman born before my father, for the king's son took me by the hand and called me brother. 
and then two kings called my father brother, and the prince my brother, and the princess my sister, and called my father father. And so we wept, and there was most gentlemen like tears that ever we shed. Hi, Brandon, how are you? We are close to the end. So, they know Perdita, who is the lost princess, is the daughter, and they had ran away, uh, her and Provizel, who is the son of the, well, the prince of uh, Bohemia, to Cecilia. They went over. Then the king of Bohemia followed them over, because he's like, no, you're not going to have to marry my daughter and everything. But now it's known that Perdita is actually the daughter of the Hermione and the king, Leontes. So everything's piecing together, and now we have Autopus, like, saying, hmm, now where's my fortune going to be? And so you have Shepherd and Clown, who are the the stepfather and stepbrother, I guess, in this case, of the princess, uh, being given nobility by the kings <laughs> because of they taking care of the daughter for 15 years. So it's like, ah, hey. you know, like lifting it up and everything. So, and Autoclus is like, okay, now where's my share? <laughs> so that's where we are. Shepherd, we may live, son, shed more. How is this interview, by the way? Like, how do you think it is? Shepherd, we may live, son, shed many more. Clown, I or else swear hard luck being in so preposterous a state as we are. Articles, I humbly beseech you, sir, to pardon me and all the faults of commit to your worship, and give me a good report to your uh, prince and master. Shepherd, pretty son, do, for we must be gentle now we are gentlemen. Come, thou wilt amend my, thy life. Articles, I, and it is like a good worship. Clown, give me thy hand, I'll sw I will swear to the prince thou art and as honest as true fellows, any in the Bohemia. Hmm, honest, hmm, hmm, hmm. Shepherd, you may say it, but not swear. Clown, not say it, now I am a gentleman. Let Bors and Franklin say it, I'll sweat. Shepherd, how be false, son? Clown, if it be never false, the true gentleman swear to him behalf of his friend. And I'll swear to the prince thou art a tall fellow of thy hands, and that thou wilt not be drunk. But I I know thou art no tall fellow of thy hands, and thou wilt be drunk. But I'll sweat, and I would thou wouldst a tall fellow of thy hands. Alcus, I will prove so, so it's my power. Clown, I by any means prove a tall fellow. If I do not wonder how thou dost venture to be drunk and not being a tall fellow, trust me not. Hark, the kings and princes of kindred are going to be seen in the queen's picture. Come, follow us. We'll be thy good, good masters. We'll be thy good masters. Final scene. Final scene. Enter. I don't need tomorrow. I need Wi Fi in a quiet place for an hour, so not my house. Ah, okay. I get you. I get you. But I hope he goes good tomorrow. I hope he does. Yeah, it's a long interview though. Like the HGV's interview is like pretty long. It's long. Do <laughs> <laughs> do. Okay. Act five, scene three. Enter Leontes, Fluxines. Oh, one of the things to do. Uh, I would note though about the HGV interviews is that they're timed. Like, at least the recording part is timed. So whenever they ask you a certain question, you have to be, like, uh, prepared to, like, answer. I feel like you're, like, a real interview, like, you know, where you'd have to actually talk to a person person. And they'd ask you a question, so, you know, you want, like, wait for like, 10 minutes or something like that, you know? So they give you, like, maybe, I think, three minutes, I think, at most, to, like, think about your answer. And then they say, okay, you can start. They force you to start if you don't, like, you know, start already. But then they gave you, like, one, uh, they also gave you, like, a time to, uh, redo it, too. So, you know, don't be too afraid if like, you stutter on the first try. <laughs> you just re restart it and then just try again. Auto. Act 5, Scene 3. Enter Leontes, Flixenes, Florizel, Perdita, Camillo, Polina, Lords, and etc. For Rizzle, my Dizzle, what's it? <laughs> Leontes, O oh, brave and good Polina, the great comfort I have had of thee, Polina. Why, sovereign sir, I did not well, I meant well. All my services you have paid home, but. You, that you have vouchsafed with your cow crown brother, and that your contract with the heirs of your kingdom, my poor house to visit, it's a sore plus of your grace, which never my life but may last to answer. No, it says, O oh, Paulina, we honor you with trouble, but we came to see the to statue of our queen. Your gallery have we passed through, through and not with much content, and many singularities, we, but, we, but, we, yep. but we saw not that which my daughter came to look upon, the statue of her mother. Polina, as she lived peerless, so she, her dead likeness, do, I do believe, excels whatever yet she look upon, or hand of man hath done. Therefore I keep it lonely apart, but here it is prepared to see the life as a lively mocked as ever. 
the still sleep mock death. Drawn aside curtain to reveal a mining of the statue. Behold, I say it is wrong. I like your silence, it shows it the more shows off your wonder a bit yet speak. First she in my leash. Comes it not simply near. Not this natural posture. Chide me, dear stone, that I may say indeed thou art Hermione. Well, rather thou art she and I not chiding, for she was as tender as in the of grace. But yet Paulina, Hermione was not such wrinkled. Not in so age it seems. Plus needs Oh, not by much. Oh, not by much. Paulina. So much the more our carver's excellence, which let's go by some sixteen years and makes her as she lived now. Not as, as now she might have done so much to my good comfort as it is now piercing to my soul. Oh, thus she stood at me with such type of majesty, warm life as it now coldly stands when I first ruled her I ashamed. Soft stone rebuke me from being more stone than it. Oh, world of peace. The mag magic in thy majesty, which has my evils conjured to remembrance, and from thy admiring sink daughter to spirits, standing like stone with thee. Perdita, and give me leave, and don't say to superstition that I kneel and implore a blessing. Lady, dear queen, that ended when I but begun. Give me that hand of yours to kiss. Plain, oh, patience, the statue is but newly fixed, the color is not dry. Camilla, my lord, your saw was too sore laid on, when sixteen winters cast them away. So many summers dry, scarce any joy, did ever so long live. No sorrow, but kill itself soon. Quick sneeze. Dear my brother, let him that was the cause of his power to take off so much grief of me, as he will piece it up for himself. Polina. Indeed, my lord, if I had thought the sight of my poor image would thus have brought you, for the stone is mine, I did not show it. Who is to draw curtains? Countess, do not draw the curtain. Polina. No longer shall you gaze on it, lest your fancy may think some on a moose. Mountus, let it be, let it be. What I were dead may think so ready. What was the he that did make it? See, my lord, would you not deem it breathe, and that those veins did verily bear blood? Plexus, masterly done. The very life seemed warm upon the lips. Mountus, the picture of our eye has motion in it, and we are mocked with aught. Polina, I'll draw the curtain. My lord's almost so far, so far transported that hell thinking on lives in it. Lamp is all sweet, Polina. Make me think of so twenty years together, no subtle sense of the world can match the pleasures of madness. Let that alone. Polina, I am sorry, sir, I have thus far stirred you, but I could afflict you farther. Lamp is too, Polina, for its affliction has a taste as sweet as any cordial comfort. Still, methinks there is an air that comes from her. Fine chisel could ever cut, get cut of breath. Let no man mock me, for I will kiss her. Polina, fear my lord, forbear the rudeness upon our lip is what you'll mar if you kiss it. Stain your own will with oily painting. Shall I draw the curtain? No, just no. Not these twenty years. Pretty so long could I stand by a non Look on. Polina, as I forbear quite presently. Why a chapel will resolve you for more basin. If you can behold it, I'll make a statue move indeed. Descend and take you by a hand, but then you'll think, which I process again, I am assisted by wicked powers. Now tis what you can make her do, I am content to look on. What to speak, I am content to hear, for tis as easy as make her speak as move. Plana. It is required you do not wake your faith. Then I'll stand still, or those that think it is unlawful business I am about, let them depart. Now tis proceed. No shrut shall stir. Wait, 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 what? Wait, what? 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 Polina, music, awake her! Rise! Strike! Hmm. Music sounds. To Hermione. This time, descend! Be still no more, approach! Strike all that look upon the marble. Come! I'll fill up your, gra your grave up. Stir! Nay, come away! Bequeath to death your numbness. For him from her, the life redeems you. To Altus. You perceive she stirs. Hermione, descend. What? Stop not, her action shall be as holy as you sh my spell be as lawful. To the answer, do not shun her until you see her die again. For then you, sh your, you kill her double. Nay, present your hand. When she was young, you wooed her. Now in age, is she to become the suitor. Now just, oh, she's warm. Is this magic? Let it be an odd. Lawful is eating. Looks she embraces him. Camilla, 
She hangs by the neck of the parts hand to life. Let us speak too. Look, sneeze. I and if manifest where she has lived or how she stole from the dead. Lena. That she is living, where it be told but to you, should be hooted at like an old tale. But it appears she lives, yet though yet she not speak. Mark a little while. To Perdita. Please let please you to impose, fair madam, kneel, and pray your mother's blessing. To my charm, good lady, our Perdita is found. Hermione, you gods look down, and from your sacred vial as poor grace is upon my daughter's head. Tell me, mine own, where hast thou been preserved, where lived, how found thy father's court? For thou shalt hear that I, knowing my Paulina than oracle, that gave hope thou wast in being, hath preserved my myself to see the issue. Paulina, there's time enough for that, lest the desire upon up on this push to trouble, your joys with relation, go together, your precious winners all, your ex exultation, partake to everyone. I, an old turtle, will will, will win me to some withered bow, and there I made starts never to be found again. Lament till I am lost. Now it says, Oh, peace, Paulina, thou shouldst thou husband take thy consent, as I be the spy thine wife. This is a match in the maid between vows thou hast found mine. But how is to be questioned, for I saw her as I thought dead, and have in vain for many a prayer upon a grave. Else not seek far from him, for him I partly know is mine, to find thee an honorable husband. Come, come, Camilla, and take her hat by the hand, whose worth and honesty is richly noted and justified by us a pair of kings. Let's from this place. To reminding, what? Look upon my brother. Both your pardons I, er, I put between your holy looks. My ill suspicion to your son in law, and your son to the king, whom heaven directing his troth plight to your daughter. Good Paulina, lead us from here hence, where we may leisurely each one demand an answer to his part for bones and his white gap for time since first we were dissevered. Hastily lead away. That's cool. That's cool. That was a cool ending. But I mean, honestly, that's like, I mean, I mean, I could have, I could have gone without, like, you know, you know. Ah, uh, Harmony coming back to life, but that was, that was, that was cool, that was cool. <laughs> and I appreciated that a lot. Anna, what do y'all think about it? Oh, what do y'all think about it? <laughs> I know Brandy kind of missed like a good chunk of it too, so I felt it is. But it will always be there in the past to be read, and you'll, you'll see my anger. <laughs> it's like, rogue, why? But it seems like this is a happy ending one. So that was good. I thought that by Winter's Tale it would be like a sad ending because, you know, in the beginning he had like M Maximilian's like comments like, it is winter so there must be a sad ending. It's like, oh. So, I don't know. That was interesting though. Alright, bye, I gotta go. But thank you all for joining me. I know it was pretty long. But, you know, I am glad that you all were here with me. Because it's always fun to be able to with you guys, honestly. Alright, love y'all. Be safe. Have a good day. Brandon, I hope your interview does well tomorrow. Be safe. Okay. Bye!